Don, I'm gonna give you a shot, but then I'm gonna go to Steve because Dan was slower than last this on the cold winter's day. Great, mighty poo. Don, you know your shit. That is the pain (laughs) poo. Fuck is bad for a day. Good job. All right. Welcome to the Cable Club. We're a retro video gaming podcast where three guys celebrate a year in showbiz. And we're linking up to talk about the games we love. We're your hosts. I'm Steve. I'm Dan. And I'm Don. And this is episode number 26. This week's episode's a celebration for our one year milestone. So get ready to upload data from us to you. And I'm going to pass it off to Don. No story for you guys this time. Oh, man. No story, except that there once upon a time were three to four to five to six guys who all went to the same <laughs> middle school and hung out together. Fast forward, we're all in our 30s, and we occasionally do a podcast together. Hey, I'm, uh, I've been shopping for walkers. I've been taking my uh, my ibuprofen for my back. You know? <laughs> yeah. my, my pillows behind me. It's good. So uh, as Steve mentioned, this is going to be an anniversary episode for us. So this really is kind of an episode uh, for us, for our community about our community. We got a few things lined up for you today. And uh, before I get into what we have lined up for you, uh, you may have noticed already we have a special guest with us. This guest is Doug. He's a longtime friend of ours. And uh, I'd say, you know, definitely a big friend of the show as well. Don't be afraid. He only mm-hmm. bites a little Must and on be command. Desperate times if you ask me for help. Great introduction. <laughs> so, Doug, are you, are you excited? Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know what you guys have gotten yourselves into, but. Uh... Let's see how it goes. <laughs> so Doug is helping us out this year because we did like a New Year's celebration last year. And uh, I put Dan and Steve through a game together, uh, mostly to watch Steve walk all over Dan. Uh, but this time. Yeah, it was close. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this time I want to beat these two in a, in, in a competition. So we invited Doug on to host the game for us. Uh, my understanding is it's going to be Jeopardy style. Uh, Jeopardy, he's, he's, he's calling it. Um, Jabroni. And then after that, we are going to do a run through of all the games that we've played this year. Uh, we're going to discuss them very briefly, and uh, we're going to give you guys a preview of what uh, ranking them in the league for next year is going to look like. And that is the Cable Club League that we've been talking about the last few episodes, uh, where uh, you all are going to tell us what the best retro games are, and we're going to rank them because that's how the internet works. You rank things. Um, and then after that, we're going to give out some uh, awards, some superlative awards that were submitted by our community. That's kind of what we have lined up for you today. I think it's going to be a little bit of a longer episode, so get comfortable. Or just drive around more. Circle the block <laughs> a couple times. Don't go home to your, uh, to your, to your family and your kid. Just uh, circle the block. Have a good time <laughs> in Never Never Nostalgia Land. Yeah, listening to us is better than listening to your wife. Trust us. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> So, Doug, before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, known you guys for a long time. His entire personality is our friendship. My entire personality (laughs) is our friendship, yeah, honestly. So, like, I honestly didn't exist until the Cable Club broadcast started. Uh, I just kind of phased into existence, and then I've been working in the background, you know, quietly, and uh, plotting my revenge. (laughs) Plotting my revenge. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, unfortunately, some of it didn't get onto screen. Like, I was trying to get Steve to uh, tell you guys that he loved Mega Man X7, and he wouldn't do it. He's like, dude, I can't even pretend to like this game. What the hell, man? Like, he's like, they'll know I'm messing with them. I'm like, no, no. I'm like, you, it's not about them figuring out that you're messing with them. It's about seeing Don's face when you say, oh, guys, it's actually better than I remember it. And Don's face just goes, mm. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely what? the long game. <laughs> so we got to play the long con. That's that's Nanny. the whole that's the whole point. No. So if you've been watching us all year and you found us unfunny, it's all Doug's fault. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Honestly, 
I mean, I, I've been watching myself all year. I find myself unfunny, so that makes sense, honestly. Well, for anybody that doesn't know, in the Discord channel, Doug is Orvos or Chef or one of those, and he shares the most memes on the channel. So. He is the meme lord. He is I, the, I meme, the meme the channel. Yeah. 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 And honestly, I would say so far, if I had to make a tier list, the best meme worthy game had to be Super Smash Brothers Melee. The best memes out of that, honestly. Yeah. It's just because just <laughs> like, it's popular. If you played this with your friends when you were a kid, it's time to take the medicine for your back. That's, that's for sure. That's right. <laughs> Melee was the best. All right, Dad. Let's get you inside. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Grandpa. <laughs> okay, Dad. Okay, Grandpa. Jeez. Or whatever, you know. All right. <laughs> So as you said, we're going to be doing a version of uh, Jeopardy. So you guys are old, you're washed up, your dads, you can't remember sh Jack. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. So we're going to make it easy for you. I'm going to give you the answers to everything. And all you got to tell you is tell me what the question is, but we're not going to answer it in the form of a question because that's boring and stupid. So that's how we're going to roll with this. And oh that's, good! That's I really. My story. That's my you know, story, and I'm sick into it. It's 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 past nine o'clock right now, and I'm definitely not up for phrasing all my answers as questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just I'll just take the L before that happens. It's fancy. Fancy. Dan, do you like the branding? Do I like it? Okay, good. He's our he's our chief branding officer. If this didn't check out by Dan, he was huh. it was then it was not happening. All right, Doug, tell us tell us the rules for those folks who don't know Jeopardy. All right, so. What we're going to do here, uh, we're going to be, rather than do it Jeopardy style, where we're going to have a uh, subtractive, so like obviously if you get a question wrong in Jeopardy, you lose your money, you lose your points. Uh, we're not going to do that here. We're just going to do additive. So the points you earn, you keep until final Jeopardy, where you will be submitting a wager and you will lose the points if you do not get the question correct. So let's go ahead and boot up the game. All right, so we're going to press start. Very All right, fancy. so the categories are say what? <laughs> Getting in the mood. Ooh. Please don't stop the music. Haiku, more like you. <laughs> and great frustrations. <laughs> All right, so for the say what category, uh, this will be a quote from our beloved Cable Club hosts, and you're going to have to tell me who said it? Now, I'm not going to make you say which episode. If you do know which episode, then great. That's that's just bonus, bonus kudos. We'll uh, give you the respect you deserve for knowing that. <laughs> Getting in the mood. So I had to do an homage to one of my favorite parts of the show. So uh, Steve's been doing setting the mood for our episodes, and I have really enjoyed that. So uh, I need you to tell me what game Steve is setting the mood for. Not the episode. You just need to tell me what game he's setting the mood for. Uh, please don't stop the music. So this category, uh, we will be playing you a soundbite of music from one of the games you have played. Uh, and sorry, I guess I should preface this. Everything you see in this game, all the games, all the questions will be pertaining to games and or episodes that have occurred on the Cable Club podcast. So there, I'm not going to ask you a question about a game you guys haven't played or anything like that. So this will be a soundbite from one of the games you have played. And you'll have to tell me based on the music, uh, what game it is from, and if you know the name of the song, again, you're not going to get any bonus points, but kudos to you for, for knowing stuff. <laughs> and then Haiku is actually a haiku that I wrote, and it's either going to be about an enemy in a game or a boss in a game. And I need you to tell me the name of the enemy and the name of the game. Now, again, it's there are some that are kind of generic, or I don't expect you to know the perfect name of the enemy, but if you can at least tell me what game it's from, I'll give you the points. And then great frustrations. So as we know, y'all have had some very big frustrating moments with some of these games. Uh, oh, some yeah. games show their age. Some games have just mechanics that aren't fun. And uh, these questions are all based on things that have frustrated you guys. So um, these are a little more specific. So the frustration might be a game. The frustration might be a mechanic in a game. Um, and I'm hoping you can tell me what the frustration is. If somebody doesn't get it directly on the head, I'll award the points to the person who got the closest, if that's fair. All right. All right. So, uh, and then, of course, uh, we have a buzzer system. 
So each player will be buzzing in. I can see uh, who buzzes in first. We will start off with the first person buzzing in. If they don't get their answer correct, we will move on to the second buzzer and so on. And if all three players get it wrong, I will reveal the answer. All right, so I guess to start this off, why don't we have you guys go ahead and buzz in and whoever buzzes in first, uh, I'll give a countdown. Uh, we'll get to pick the first category of the episode. All right, so in three, two, one, go. And we have Steve. All right, Steve, go ahead and pick a category. All right. Let's start with, uh, say what for one point. Let's say what for slow. one? Oh, man. What a, okay, Steve's playing the coward's game. Here we <laughs> go. Say what for one. Examen. All right, looks like we had a malfunction with the buzzer. Yeah, I did. I had, I tried <laughs> to hit it and then it didn't go off the first time I hit it. Okay, so uh, st I guess we'll just give it to Steve. Steve, who said Examen? <laughs> Dan said Examen. Steve, you couldn't be more right. That was Dan, episode 22, Mega Man Legends. Man. He said Examen. <laughs> Steve's on the board, boys, we with one point. I'm going to go ahead and turn back. Buzzer's clear. All right, Steve, go ahead and pick the next category. Let's do getting in the mood for three. Getting in the mood for three. All right, and uh, nope, let me finish reading before you buzz in. If you bu if I see you buzz in before I finish reading, <laughs> I'm going to move you to the bottom of the list. Piece of crap. <laughs> You may reminisce about your past, and the wave of nostalgia you can taste on the tip of your tongue deep down in your memory. All of these old feelings, like home-cooked meals. All right, looks like Steve buzzed in first. This is an unfair category for Steve. <laughs> <laughs> this was Final Fantasy XI. Uh, is he right? That is correct. It is Final Fantasy XI. And uh, <laughs> do you, shoot up, PenCap, do you have a home? <laughs> deep, deep cut for, uh, for, for those of you who... Uh, might know these guys. Is Steve gonna sweep us? Oh, he keeps it, well, if he buzzes in, he picks this guy. <laughs> he's like the, the, the Kirby Quick Draw champion over here. All right, <laughs> Steve, go ahead and pick the next category. Uh, great Frustrations for five. Great Frustrations for five. All right. It's so morally depressing. Like, as a kid, I probably would have cried. Basically, the game's telling you, you're not good enough. Get out of here. Uh I knew what it was. I knew I hit it too early. Oh, uh, somebody's... <laughs> yeah, okay. So, going to go to Dawn. Oh, that is from uh, Super Mario Land, the Six Golden Coins episode. Dan Dan said that. <laughs> Dan did absolutely <laughs> say that, and the game is for sure. <laughs> it's also lose, a short. It's when yep. you lose all your gold coins in the Super Mario Land 2. Yep. I got the occasion. Feels bad, man. Feels bad, man. One of our <laughs> most right. watched shorts ever, actually. Don, yeah. like 4,000. Coming in with five points. All right. <laughs> Go ahead, Don. Pick a category. Buzzer's clear. Buzzer's clear. Go for it. Uh, let's go to please don't stop the music. So we we probably have to wait till the audio clip is done before we hit the buzzer. Uh, yes. And then okay. uh, what, what number? I think we should buzz as soon as. Let's just go to five. Know. Actually, you know what? If, if, for this one, you don't have to wait for the clip to be over. As soon as you think you know it, go ahead and buzz in. All right, five. Going please don't stop five. the music for five. All right, here we go. Audio clip. Let's see if you guys can get it. Are we ready? Ready. Ready. Yeah. Still ready. <laughs> All right. Also, this uh, might be the moment where I need to let you guys know I wanted to avoid a DMCA strike, so I did had to do kazoo covers of all of these songs. What? <laughs> so everyone knows. I was <laughs> like, what am I listening to? <laughs> all right, so first person to buzz in was Dan. What is that music? That was from Ninja Gaiden. That is correct. That is yeah. the prologue theme from the start screen of Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> How do you even know that? <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Dan's coming in swinging. All right. Oh, man. Get these guys different partners because Dan's swinging. All right, Dan, please pick a category. <laughs> okay. That was an actually pretty fun question. So I'm going to do, please don't stop the music for. 
All right, I wasn't here we go. Braced for the kazoo. All right, here we go, fellas. What's that music? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna guess Super Smash Brothers Melee. Nope. Oh, I that know. is You're incorrect. Right Dan, what, what is your answer? That is Twisted Metal from the first level. That oh. is... Oh my oh, god. god. You got it wrong. Los got it Angeles wrong. from Twisted Metal 2. Yes. You said Twisted Metal. I did. In not Twisted Metal 2. It's the only Twisted oh, Metal we've played this year. That's okay. That's right. He loses four points. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first. Dan. Dan coming out. Dan coming in hitting heavy. Dan, all right. I didn't Dan know it until the end the of that category. Sound. I hate this category. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm gonna do haiku for three points. All right. As the clanks quicken, you can hear your own heartbeat. The stuff of nightmares. All right. Looks like we got Steve buzzing in. Steve, what what is this enemy? Um. Is it the uh, Silent Hill, um, the dogs? That is incorrect, Steve. All right, oh, moving on to uh, Dan. I actually don't know. I don't even know why I buzzed. Um, <laughs> I know what it is. Now I feel like you need to lose your... Uh, I, I'm going to pick an enemy from Splatterhouse on um, the... The thing with the long arms. That is incorrect, Dan. I, I Dawn. It's the Reaver you. bots from Mega Man Legends. No way, right? Dawn, you couldn't be more correct. That are the Shurikurusu from Mega Man Legends. Yeah, they all have weird names. <laughs> they, yeah, I was gonna say, I wasn't expecting <laughs> I you guys you to get that, that name. That's crazy. All right, Dawn, three points. Maybe that should have been the three point answer. Well, I'm kind of a dick. All right, moving on. <laughs> Dawn, go ahead and pick a category. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's go to say what for five. Say what for five. I forget the rules of this category. Clear the buzzer. I, I'm, I'm going to re and then I'm going to clear the buzzers. All right. In the prologue, because you guys keep ringing in jerks. In the prologue or whatever, she talks about her previous journeys, but because Prime came out later in the real world, she just doesn't mention Prime at all. She's just like, yeah, we're just going to skip that. All right. Steve with the buzzer. Super Metroid. Yep, and who said it? Oh, I'm sorry. It was Dan. It was, in fact, Dan. <laughs> I, tried get, Dan. Where I tried to get Dan's <laughs> hand on screen where he's like, yeah, we're just going to skip that. <laughs> all right, Steve with five points. Are these all eight. from the shorts? No, they're not. <laughs> all right. Go ahead and pick a category, Steve. Uh, let's do say what for four. Say what for four. Once you click a task, you can't leave it till it's done. So I'm like, oh God, just flip it. All right, Dan. That is from Ore no Riore from Dawn. That is in fact Dawn <laughs> from Ore no Riore. Good job. All right. Beat me by such a split second too. <laughs> All right. Clear buzzer. I'm gonna clear buzzers this time. Be honest this time, guys. All right, Dan, go ahead. Or go ahead and pick the next category. Getting in the mood for five. Getting in the mood for five. You wonder which games your cousin has been playing. You quickly run past your aunt, uncle, and you mutter up, "Hi," but you're more interested in what they're doing. <laughs> Come on, All Steve. All right. Dawn with the first uh, ring. I'm going to go with the Mega Man Legends episode. Yep. Yep, that is in fact Mega Man Legends. Good job. Hey, remember the Game Boy in the car on the way over. All right, good job. All right, Dawn. Five points. There better be a daily double in here. Oh, there's no daily double. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I failed you can't do you it because it's, cause it's, cause it's, it's Japarity. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's do getting in the... Well, you know what? Let's just get the fives out of the way. Let's do the haiku for five. Haiku for five. All right. Massive head, jacked arms, running around throwing bombs, wash away the rain. Hmm. Eh, eh. <laughs> Anybody 
gonna take a stab? This is a hard. This is a five point question. This is a hard one. All right, Dawn. Nice head, jacked arms, running around, throwing bombs. Wash away the rain. I'm not sure, man. Dawn, you're buzzed in. Yeah, I don't know. I'm timing out. That's it. All right. So no one got this one. This is the Moving King Kaifuda oh, wow. from Gunnack. I, so, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I never would have got that. that I never would have got that. That, that, was, yeah. that was a five-point question to end all five-point <laughs> questions. That I was like, oh, God, if someone gets this. So, yeah, he literally just walks around throwing bombs, and then he has an attack that he throws raindrops at you. So. Gunnack. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a deep cut right there. All right, nobody got that one. Uh, last question was picked by Don. So, Don, go ahead and pick the next uh, one. All right. Uh... Staying away from the music. Uh, let's go to Say What for Three. Say What for Three. Stop right there. You're going to compare this to Pokemon's music? Get out. All right, Don. Uh, yeah, that, that's Steve. That's Steve. 100% that's Steve. And yes, that is also from a short. And I had to clip. I clipped it from the short because I wanted to make sure the Get Out was there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, Don, pick the next category, please. All righty, I'm on a roll. Uh, let's go to Great Frustrations for number four. Great Frustrations for four. You're out of cards? Sorry, bucko. Looks like you're just going to have to stand here and die. And remember, I'm looking for the actual frustration. Steve buzzing in first. Uh, the, the person who said it or the game that it was? So it is... It, it can be the game, but what particular, so it's a frustrate, this was something you, that frustrated you guys about this game. Do you remember what it was? Oh yeah, it's running out of cards in um, Lost Kingdoms. Okay. Uh, so I'll admit, I only buzzed in last because I forgot the rules of that category. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, let, I don't know if we need, what we're gonna want to, so here's the deal. So in this case, it's a particular, I, I don't know if we should have you guys all give your answers, and then I'll try to give the cloak because I'm looking for something specific here. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, next would be uh, would be Dan. Dan, what what do you think the answer is? Well, it's definitely from Lost Kingdom. Um, yeah. Best. Of, it's from like when you're fighting a boss, and then like you run out of cards, and it's just basically you literally have to stand there and die and start over. You can't actually run away. Yeah. 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 I mean that's. That's just part of that. So game. I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Steve then. But the answer I was looking for specifically, there's no basic melee ability. There's oh, so basically, yeah. like you said, once you run out of abilities, you can't do anything. It's not like Kingdom Hearts where you can just wail on it. So, all right. So we're gonna give that one to Steve. Right. Just give it to nobody. <laughs> or you can wow. just give it to me because I'm thinking I'm in last. We know Steve does not need the help. We know this. <laughs> Uh, actually, current scores: Don is at 16, Steve is at 12, and Dan is at 13. Yeah, I'm I'm losing to the buzzer, man. I know a lot of these. <laughs> All right, uh, Steve, go ahead and pick pick the next category. Um, we could do haiku for four. Haiku for four. The sounds of flutter strike fear into a man's heart, and he'll lose three health bars. All right, we've got Don buzzing in first. Those are the hawks from Ninja Gaiden. Yep. They are absolutely the birds from Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I, I just want to say I'm really proud of myself for these for these haikus. I'm a pretty Me too. <laughs> All right. Don, go ahead and pick the next category. Uh, let's go to Great Frustrations for one. Great Frustrations for one. Controls, sound, gameplay, storyline, but most of all, this. Back to the ground! Back the whole thing, boys. All right, uh, Steve, bring in first. What is the frustration here? Uh, it is the audio clips in Mega Man X7. They're horrid. So I just went with the whole game. <laughs> the whole game was just bad and, and really, really frustrating for you guys. But yes, for sure, that audio is just abhorrent. All Can right. we just say that that, that, that has like the, one of the best Mega Man X covers, though? Like, just, just the cover art of that game is like the it best. It is beautiful art. Yeah, it is good. It's so sad. Trying to make up for it. He's the only person <laughs> working in that entire team. <laughs> All right, Steve, go ahead and pick the next category. Let's do getting in the mood for four. Mood for four. Turn your TV off. You turn your TV off. You fly under the covers. Your door creaks open and then shuts again quietly. 
That was a close one. But now it's finally time to face your fears. All right, Ooh, Steve, dang. bring it in. This one is Parasite Eve. That is correct, Parasite oh, Eve. Wow. I would have got that wrong. I was going to uh, say no, uh, I was Resident really Evil banking. 2. I was really banking on Steve getting that one wrong. Oh, man. All right, Steve, go ahead and pick the next category. Um, don't stop the music for three. Oh, poor Don. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Clear you said button. Steve was at 12, but I give him the, I give him the music. Steve's at 17. Uh, so Don's at 20, Steve's at 17, Dan's at 13. Here we go, fellas. Come on. Dan ringing in first. I'm sorry, I have to let that beautiful music play. Do, 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 do. That is right. from Super Smash Brothers Melee. I like the kazoo version All better. Right. I I hate these kazoos. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the fact, the final destination from Super Smash Brothers Melee. It was the only Smash way to level the playing field. Yeah, <laughs> I, to, yeah. I, I, I thought it would be... Uh, I, I was afraid of DMCA strikes, and I also thought it would be way too easy to give you the actual... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to be honest, uh, first I sang them and like just hummed them, and then uh, a friend of mine was like, "You should get a kazoo." And I, oh, it is no. you playing it. <laughs> it's you playing it on the kazoo. <laughs> it is, I recorded all of these. Yes. I was like, uh, is there someone on YouTube just doing kazoo it, covers of all these of all this music, and he got that it, lucky? And, like, and shameless plug: if there's anybody out there looking for a pro kazoo player, hit me up. <laughs> I, I I do commissions. Yeah, you uh, can totally. You can totally www.chefdougplaysthekazoo.com. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like Don't a good spell idea. that wrong. You'll get taken to a site you don't want to be on. Uh, a lot of <laughs> X-rated stuff on that website. Anyway, let's kick it back to Dan. Go ahead and pick the next category. Great frustrations for three. Frustrations for three. These are arguably the most powerful enemies in Resident Evil 2, and we're not talking about the zombies. No idea. All right. Remember, these are things that frustrated you about these games. Steve, go ahead. Or they also frustrated the masses. To be oh, honest. I know. Steve, go ahead. What do you, what do you, you have for your answer? I'm pretty sure it's camera angles. Camera angles is one of them. What's the second thing? Oh, controls. That is correct. The screen scroll and lock slash lock and the tank controls. So I remember specifically Dawn being super upset about the fact that a zombie would just walk onto the screen and slap you. And, and you could not shoot them. You could literally like Leon staring at them, but could not shoot them. So Steve gets the three points. All right. Steve, go ahead and pick the next category. Say what for two. Say what for two. Oh. Here we go. His poor son. What's the name of his kid? David? All right, David. Now you get be better get in there and clean those guts up. Damn, All right, Don, ring it in first. All right, that that's Steve. For sure, Steve. And that was from episode one, Splatterhouse. Episode one. The very baby. opening. Taking it back to the beginning, boys. Wow. For... I'm getting killed by the buzzer, man. Yeah, Don's <laughs> getting ahead of me. All right. You have to with these fingers. All right, here we go. Don, pick yeah, the next category. hitting it right before he's done speaking, I know. I, 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 I'm, I'm anticipating his punctuation. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. Uh, let's do getting in the mood for two. You know, I think I can... I think I can lock buzzers. Getting in the mood for two. All right, here we go. Uh, do you remember how you met your best friends, your significant other, or your favorite pets? These are our memories that will be ingrained with you for an entire lifetime. You didn't reset the buzzer, I don't think. Oh, okay, here we go. Boom. I feel like that was unfair. All right, Don, go ahead. I'm <laughs> the worst game show host ever, I'm fired. Super Smash Brothers Melee. That is correct, Super Smash Bros. Uh, my one regret is that I don't have a picture of us playing Super Smash Brothers Melee, but I did find a group of kids playing it on a CRT. So. <laughs> yeah, it looks just like us. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Two points to Dawn. All right. Go ahead and pick the next category, Dawn. Uh, let's go with Please Don't Stop the Music for Two, because I love the, that how that kazoo slaps. Oh, yeah, it's so good. You should <laughs> the buzzer. All right. 
And, and just please, ladies, I, I am, in fact, married, so please don't be in my DMs for this. like we got Dawn ringing in first. Dawn, what right, game so is that from? For a second there, I almost thought it was Brinstar from Super Metroid, but it's not. It's 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 the it's from Super Mario World. That is, in fact, the underwater theme from yeah. Super Mario World. <laughs> it had a brinstar you know, twang, <laughs> twang to it. <laughs> All right, Dawn, go ahead and pick the next category. Uh, let's do Great Frustrations for Two. Great Frustrations for Two. Yo, is this for real? Hold run button. Yo, is this for real? All right, we got Dan ringing in first. What do we think, Dan? That is from Parasite Eve, when uh, Ava does not walk or run very fast. That is correct. Ava, Aya's movement speed oh, from Iva. Parasite Eve. Iva. You know, should we take the points away from him for saying <laughs> Ava? <laughs> we have that's, a doctor that's Ava from that. Symphony of the Night. Like, no, I'm sorry, Dan, that is, that is incorrect. All right, <laughs> we'll, we'll give it to him. This is charity, charity points here. All right. Clearing buzzers. I'll go ahead and pick the next category, Dan. Please don't stop the music for one. Stop the music for one. All right, here we go. Should be an easy one. It's the one pointer. Oh, wow. <laughs> Instantaneously. We didn't even make it halfway through, guys. Come on. All right, go ahead. Uh, I'm as happy Dan. to hear it in Kazoo as I am. The actual MIDI. <laughs> yeah, All right. right. That All is right, Dan. Mega for, Man for your honor. Mega Man Battle Network Three. Dan, you could not be more correct. That is the title theme for the Mega Man Battle Network Three. All right. Us, us. That slaps. And if it anybody does. wants to hear that in Kazoo one more time, I feel like we, we, we can do, we could arrange that. <laughs> All right, uh, Dan. Go ahead and pick the next category. Haiku for two. Haiku for two. Grandeur is thy name, almighty though corny god. Imagine the stench. Oh, fuck. Oh, okay. Yep. Come on, Dan, right. buzz in your last. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Steve, going on. Steve jumped the gun a little bit. Yeah, I, I was thinking I was in the music uh, one. Like, not, not thinking that I was in the music, but I was in music mode where I could go in as fast as I could, but I jumped the gun, so I'm on the All right, bottom. Alright, so, Don, I'm going to give you a shot, but then I'm going to go to Steve, because Dan was slower than the last of some of the great did. Mighty Poo. Oh, Don, from... you know your shit. That is the Green <laughs> Poo. Fuck is bad for a day. Good job. Alright. A huge supply of dish for my chocolate star. Alright, Don, go ahead and pick the next category. How about getting in the mood, you little twat? Getting in the mood. All right, I'm going to clear the buzzers. All right. I'm going to give it to you, boys. You're excited to sleep in, but your father knocks and opens the door. He says, get dressed. We're going yard sailing. All right, Dan browsing in first. What do you wow, think, Dan? Man. That is from the Little Samson episode. That is correct. It is Little Samson. And the reason that was the one point was because that was the most recent one. So I was like, if you guys don't remember this, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, yard right. sale is the only way you're going to get one of those. All right. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, Dan, you got a ton of options here. What are you going to pick for the final um, category? What shall I pick? I think I'm going to go with Haiku for one. All right, Haiku for one. Here we go. Resetting the buzzers. He will break new ground. Challenge him to catch these hands. You don't have the guts. Did I miss, like, are the one-point questions the hardest? Maybe. Uh, this one is. All right, Steve buzzed in. What do we it's, think, Steve? It's Guts Man. It is, in fact, Guts Man EXE from Mega Man Battle Network oh. 3. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I was not thinking of him at all. Clever. That was good job, Steve. Proud Thank of you. you. All right, fellas. So that brings us to the end of the questions, and we're going to be going into Final Jeopardy. So... 
The way this is going to work, I am going to bring us to Final Jeopardy. You will get to see what the category is, and then you'll have to message me on Discord your wagers, and then uh, I will have you also send me your Discord answers. And How many points do we all have? So, Don, you are currently in the lead with 28 points. Ooh. Steve is in second place with 21 points, and Dan is in third place with 20 points. So, Final Jeopardy for the Cable Club Final Jeopardy. So the category is Back to the Beginning. So that is going to be the category of the question. So for the final round, for the final Jeopardy of the Cable Club game, you're going back to the beginning. Please send me your wagers before we reveal the question. I... All right, wagers are locked in. The, so this will be Jeopardy style. So I'm going, this is going to be the answer. And I need you to tell me what the question is. Shining Force on the Sega Genesis, Ogre Battle, March of the Black Queen on Super Nintendo, and Sonic the Hedgehog on Sega Genesis. What is the question? And you're gonna message me your answers on Discord. the kazoo and the cat just bolted. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'm collecting your answers. Am I the only one left? Dan is the only one who hasn't answered so far. I feel like the kazoo's done. Pencil's down. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Keep going. I don't really know. All right. So... Don's answer was what was what is a bad game that you love? Steve's answer, what are the first games that we beat? Dan's answer, Dan, that is very rude. My mother is a saint. <laughs> the answer, what are the games you are most nostalgic for? This was your very uh, first question of the week, and I thought it'd be a really nice way to end the game back where we started at your very, very first question of the week. We all That's got it wrong. One. All right, so uh -oh. final score. So Dan, <laughs> balls of steel, uh, <laughs> waged all of it and lost it all just to insult my mother. <laughs> He's now at zero. Steve, also, <laughs> balls of titanium, because he actually gave an answer, only to lose it all, also down to zero. Don, more conservative. He's been around the block a few times, risked 15 points, bringing him down to a total of 13. I just knew so, if Steve doubled his score, I would have beat him by one if we both got the answer right. That's why I risked 15. <laughs> yeah, with the higher score, it's easier to be conservative for I sure. Just him a big stack. <laughs> Now, yeah, so... if I'm not mistaken, is Shining Force the first game you beat? Because I'm pretty sure that's your that was your answer when we had that question of the week. No, I think the first game I ever beat might, might be Pokemon Blue. Mm, I'm going to have to go back and look at that episode because I'm so, pretty sure you said I will Shining tell you, Force. First, so Don might have said Shining Force, or I, I don't think he said Shining Force. Steve, you for sure did say Sonic the Hedgehog was the first game you beat. However... Dan did not beat that game. Oh, Sonic 3. <laughs> Sonic 3 was the first game I, I ever rolled credits on because I talked about that final boss where you get to jump and thread the needle. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I thought it was Shining Force. I was like, two of these games make sense. That's that's a good guess. So. Well, boys, I told you I was uh, I was, I was going to clean it up. You want to be in this game? Here I am. <laughs> oh, listen here. He may not have been paying attention. You were clicking that, that thing right before he finished speaking. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. What I yeah. See, what it sounds see, you're totally not even denying it. <laughs> not even totally denying it. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Thank you so much for putting that on, Doug. That was that was beyond expectations. I really had no idea. the The yeah, kazoo was, was the kazoo was Chef Doug's kiss right there. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't believe so the the dedication. That's fantastic. We uh, this is the trust kazoo right here. Uh, shameless plug. Uh, discount code uh, Chef Doug on Amazon. Uh, so you get two percent off. It's a five dollar. <laughs> it's used. Uh, <laughs> It's still warm. You know, this is our show. You can holes. plug in when I tell you to put your plugs in, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug for the kazoo. Uh, anyway, like... Uh, do you have an online presence that you want people to know about? I do not. Okay. It doesn't really matter, but uh, all right. I know I you kind of do like workout stuff sometimes, so I wasn't sure. Yeah. But I right, just want to finish this by saying thank you for having me on, guys. It's been a great year. I love you all. Great job. Keep up the good work, and I look forward to seeing you on this episode. We will see Doug again soon. Yes, we will. Right. Thank you, Doug. So the next part of our show is we're going to skip down our own memory lane of the last year, and we're going to talk about the games that we've done this year, and we're going to give you a preview of how the league is going to work for next year. We really think the league is going to be the way that we're going to handle the show going forward. Um, so essentially, I have in front of me uh, the Tier Maker website, Right, and you can all see it on our, on our screen here. If you're just listening, uh, just listen along and try to follow along as best you can. So, the object is that uh, we start with a single tier, and the first group of games just gets dropped into that single tier. And then once a group is complete, subsequent games will either move up, will will move up the ladder, uh, or stay on the existing tier and push another game up the ladder. Basically, right. So as the league evolves more and more uh, we're calling them cups uh, will appear, right? So uh, what we want at, at the end of the league is to have five cups with an even amount of uh, games in them because each cup will have its own set of awards. And I've kind of mentioned before that, you know, we're going to give out some prizes and, and stuff and that's, and that pertains to that, right? Not all games are created equal, unfortunately. <laughs> nope. So we just want to be fair to all entrants and just kind of give an opportunity. So, if they were, then we would be out of a podcast idea. Right? We'd just be like, yes, someone would just windmill slam Super Mario World and that'd be it. We yeah. just wouldn't talk about another game. Too bad. Uh, so uh, we are a Pokemon-scented podcast. We keep saying that even though we haven't played a Pokemon game yet. Uh, so our cups are going to be in the style of Pokemon Stadium Cups, starting with the Apricorn Cup. All right. So we're just going to rapid fire these games. You'll hear a little bit of music uh, before each discussion, but we're just going to uh, talk a little bit about them and our experience uh, with them. So are you guys ready? Ready. All right. So uh, we're going to go kind of round robin uh, and all start and all the games are, are, are in order. So. Splatterhouse 3 uh, was the first game that we played on the podcast. What a game to start off on. I'm not sure it did us any favors because it's like M-rated, right? But yeah. uh, like, I thought this was going to be so much better than it than, than it was. Do you guys remember what a mess this, this, this game is? Yeah, I, I mean, I do. I mean, I the game itself wasn't too bad. The only thing I didn't like about it was like the time gate where like you yeah. had to that's what kind of ruined it for me it had the weird timer but the weird exploration element but you had like every disincentive to go explore yeah like, who can forget breadsticks oh uh, yeah yeah <laughs> so like d despite the um how good the game was i would say that it left kind of a lasting impression like i do think about this game somewhat often still <laughs> yeah and then I actually, you know, after playing this one, I actually went back and played the second one, which I think is actually better. I know. did not, but Steve did too, right? Yeah. Well, so I didn't know which one we were playing at first, so I started out on Splatterhouse 2, and I got like maybe three quarters the way through, and then someone was like, no, we're playing Splatterhouse 3. I was <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> the second one's kind of like a bloody altered beast. Dude, almost. it's better. Yeah. yeah, it's like, it's. I think it's side-scrolling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, uh, what's it, uh, Spider-Man Maximum Carnage? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, so we don't have any other games to grade this against yet, so uh, as we mentioned at the top of this segment, it's going to go into Apricorn tier to start. And then we're going to move on to Mega Man X7. All right, Mega Man X7. So obviously Mega Man X series is a great series. This is the first in the series where they wanted to go 3D, and unfortunately... They weren't batting a thousand with this game. You, you guys know it's like the voice acting's bad. 
<laughs> Zero is terrible, which is pretty sad because he's so fun to play in the previous games. They added Axel. I it's wanted just... to like anything, anything about this game. <clears throat> I really did. But the there mu- really is. Yeah. Like, oh. Well, I think the music is its only saving grace, really. Everything else is just not that great. Like, yeah. even the menu's bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially after when you beat a stage where, like, Ailey is talking to you, that segment takes forever. It's, like, literally, like, 45 seconds long before, it, you know, she, like, explains to you, like, all the reploids that you saved and, like, saving the game. Like, it takes forever. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I, I beat it, and I did not have any fun. It's it's shocking. <laughs> it really takes making a bad game to, to an art form. Yeah, like it's you know, it's almost How about impressive taking a, a great franchise and ruining it after six other entries. <laughs> great, yeah. great cover art though. Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, good. that's not going to help it out here in the tier list. <laughs> yeah, the, oh, in Apricorn it goes <laughs> there. It will probably stay. Let's move on to the next one. All right. Well, Super Mario World being one of the all-time greats of Mario side-scrolling platformers, everybody knows it. Everybody loves it. Um. I was happy to get back to playing it uh, again after a few years through the podcast, so um, it was up against Sonic 3, and uh, and uh, we kind of had a fist-flying type mm-hmm. deal on that one. Um, but, I mean, what can you say about this game that hasn't already been said? It's, just, it's an amazing game. Um, yeah. It easily gets in front of these two, no problem. Yeah, easily. This game I mean, is miles ahead of the, the other two that are on there right now. I, uh, I, this, this playthrough, I really experimented with the spin jump. I didn't play this as a, as a, as a kid. I, I I beat it as an adult a few years ago, and this was my second playthrough it. And like, by that time I'd already consumed a bunch of Mario Maker content and I was like, oh, you can spin jump off things. So I spent this entire playthrough just walking all over it and and using booze as platforms. Yeah. The spin (laughs) jump is OP. Like I, like I'm like you, I didn't really use it as a kid, but yeah. It's very strong. Very, very good game. Love it. And they get put into the uh, league in no particular order, so don't think that this is ranking it below X7. It certainly is not. So Sonic 3 and Knuckles is like a was like a childhood staple for me. Like, I got... I spent one year in grade school getting, like, grounded, like, basically every other week. Just kept screwing <laughs> up. My parents kept grounding me. So... I had this this like Sega like multi CD for my computer, and I told my parents I was doing homework when I was playing this, and uh, I, I'm sure they knew. They just probably didn't care. But uh, like this 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 was one of my earliest uh, games that I that I ever beat, and I I just love it. Uh, the combination of these two games together makes it like so much better. And uh, when we played it for the podcast. I squeezed in enough time to beat it with all three characters and collect all the Chaos Emeralds and, and uh, Master Emeralds for everybody. Wow. Like, it's just, uh, you know, it's a really good... Uh, it's like the definitive Sega title for me. Yeah. This was the first time I actually beat it was on the podcast. Like, I'm a Sonic 2 fan through and through, but, like, uh, I really enjoyed, you know, Sonic and Knuckles. I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I'm a Sonic fan, or Sonic 2 fan as well, but when we did this episode, uh, well, for this episode... I did collect all the Chaos Emeralds and the Master Emeralds uh, and beat both sides. So I ended up collecting everything on it, and I had a great time, but I just couldn't put it in front of Super Mario World personally. But great game. Yeah. And Dan actually taught me something about, like, all the sprites that they designed for for each of the characters. Like, I didn't realize that they had that they had put so many. Yeah, that's a lot. Like... I just want to say, like, if when you're on like those like spinny platforms, they they literally have like uh, a different sprite for like every two frames when they're spinning. It's crazy. No, really, really good. Gun neck. <laughs> oh boy. So this one, I mean, this is probably the game I forget the most. But um, <laughs> obviously, it's you know, it's a bullet hell game. Um, I, it's like set in the future, and then you everything gets like changed into like items, like. I believe like enemies turn into like carrots and other inanimate objects. Basically, it's like you go through like eight stages, I believe. I, I really think it wasn't that hard up until like the last few levels where like the, the difficulty just spiked immensely. 
and like, it comes with all the struggles that shmups have. Yeah, like yeah. The, the sun level, like holy moly, dude! The sun level is <laughs> awesome. <Yeah. laughs> this is a nice little surprise. Uh, I'd never heard of it, um, but it, like for anybody that likes Galaga, this like for the NES takes it up e- another notch, and it was a lot of fun in my opinion. It, and it ran like, I great. I beat it like three times. I had fun. Yeah, it, and it ran great for an NES title. Like the, you could have like so many things on the screen, and I. I believe I don't remember any slowdowns. Oh, that's actually true. I never, I, I didn't, I didn't really think about that. But, but you're absolutely right. Like I think, I think that's just part of the shmup design, right? Like it's just like a plain back, uh, plain black background with stuff happening. Like I think, I think it helps. I don't know. Yeah, but it's gotta. You're right. It runs, it runs really good despite the design being like whatever is scattered across people's desks. Mega dinero. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like, like, yeah. <laughs> What a what a weird game! I actually got this off of a hidden hidden gems list. I think I'm putting it in the forgotten gems category. Yeah, for sure. Banjo Kazooie. So Banjo Kazooie, uh, I have beaten this game a lot, uh, like multiple times. So coming back to it as my uh, choice of game for the Coliseum was mainly because I wanted you two to play it, and you hadn't. Um, yeah. It's just a beloved game for me. It's one of the first games that I spent like a whole summer playing, trying to collect all the jiggies and the notes and, you know, trying to beat that game was like a big part of my third grade summer. And uh, it holds a really special place in my heart. So I actually want to hear more about what you guys think again, because I could gush about it forever. <laughs> it's a very special place on my amnesty list. At yeah. The top, but still there. <laughs> yeah, same for me. <laughs> the mad monster mansion. Yeah. I mean, I, you should stream that for me sometime and I'll, <laughs> I'll play it with you kind of deal and I'll backseat game for you and, and we'll have fun. I, I promise. Fair enough. We'll plan it for the next time we're, we're, we're together. Cause I played it on original hardware. Yeah. Like, I, I definitely enjoyed Banjo-Kazooie when we did play it. Um, but I think as I get older, I'm, I am kind of, like, getting away from, like, 3D platformers. I, I don't know. I just, they're, they're just not my thing as much as they used to be when I was a kid. They soak up a lot of time. And Banjo-Kazooie, yeah. I think, is no exception. Yeah. That, I, even, I mean... though it's, even though it's best in class, probably. Yeah. It depends on how, how much you know. Because I can get through the game 100% and, like three hours impressive the speed runs too all right super metroid (laughs) guys this is my first time playing super metroid my first time ever playing a metroid game was with um was with steve like a year prior and we played through metroid dread and i absolutely loved it and like when this game popped up i was like oh man i can't wait to play it i'm surprised like i was so surprised how well it holds up to metroid dread like to this like, day, it's still one of the best Metroidvanias out there. Yeah, I'm yeah. such a Metroid fan now. Yeah, like, and, and yeah. the graphics, man. Like for for SNES, like for like a, if this was to come out today as an indie title, it would still look amazing. It's just that good. The game is a masterclass. I think it's the best looking game on the SNES. Just uh, like straight up. Yeah, I would, I would probably agree with that. It's so good. I mean, it, there are a lot of good contenders. We have one on this list. Um, but, yeah, it's a gorgeous game. Yeah, for sure. And, like, I don't know, so much of it works. Like, I had to use a guide maybe, like, once or twice. I'm just so surprised at how uh, well-paced it is for such a dated title. Yeah. Of that of that type. It's, it's incredible. Agreed. I mean, it really pioneered that whole entire genre, really. Like, yeah. There wasn't a Castlevania game that did that until Symphony of the Night. Well, right? well or you could maybe say Ron Simon's Ron Quest. Simon's yeah. Quest did it. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's but close enough. Metroid, I think, did it first, right? Like, the original Metroid came out before Simon's Quest, right? Yeah. 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 All right. So that will be... So now the Apricorn tier is full. It's got seven games in it. So the next game is going to have to move up a tier. And the new tier is going to be called... The Pokeball tier. Now games will either enter the Pokeball tier or be relegated down to Apricorn tier and push other games up to the Pokeball tier. Now things are going to get interesting. Yep. Now we need to start making some decisions. All right. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. All right. Symphony of the Night is basically another Metroidvania. You play as Alucard. 
I love this game to death. I I fell in love with it the first time I played it. Just everything about it, like just the atmosphere, the fact that you play as like Dracula's son, I thought that was so cool. You know, you get your variety of weapons and whatnot, and I I guess like the the biggest gripe I would have with this game is it's pretty easy, honestly. I'm not for one to like gimping yourself like, oh, just play with no armor or, you know, use weaker <laughs> weapons. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Like, I want to play the game how it's supposed to be played. I just wish it was a little harder. I I'm, I played this game first in middle school and um, I was a Castlevania fan before I knew this game existed because when I was younger, I played a lot of Simon's Quest and Castlevania 3, but not – I did, we didn't have Castlevania 1. But um, this game – like brought me back to my roots a lot uh and it is a blast i mean if you haven't played this game like it is a great entry title for the genre yeah along with super metroid but yeah alucard is just such a cool protagonist (laughs) yeah i i will say that i played aria of sorrow first like a few months before playing this and i do think that uh it's an unpopular opinion but i think aria of sorrow uh sands all the rough edges that uh, you get when you play Symphony of the Night. That's that's not to say it's bad. It certainly is not. Uh, but you see a lot of the mechanics that were put into that game that kind of buckle under their own weight um, when you compare it to some of the later titles that did this. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, that's just the product of, you know, evolving. So in terms of placement on the list, is this the best game here? Symphony of the Night? Um, No. I wouldn't say no. What do we think is? What gets to move up to Pokeball? Me, personally, it would be Super Metroid. Yep. Ditto. It's it's Super Metroid, for sure. Right. Next game, Metroid Prime. So, Metroid Prime was the first, like, first-person... Like, I, I hate to label it a first-person shooter, because it's a first-person adventure game. But, like, I'm not a big FPS kind of guy, but Metroid Prime is it's got to be one of the greatest first person games with a gun even though it's not a shooter i i have beaten this game like three times now all from middle school and up but they just they brought metroid into a, a realm in which i never even thought about as a kid and they pulled it off so extremely well yeah they did i would say like for me it's probably my favorite in the series like i know it's not like your traditional metroidvania with the side scrolling but like this game was so good you know i I, there's very little bad i can say about it i remember as a kid like you know changing into the morph ball the first time i i just amazed just like how good it looked and stuff and uh, you could tell they really put a lot of time and effort into that game this game has the rare Wii supremacy (laughs) <laughs> I believe the Wii version to be the best version. I had a blast playing this on 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 Wii hardware uh, for the podcast, where uh, just using the Wii mote to point and shoot and look around, like it was just perfect. It was it was really good. Um, and uh, you know, I kind of want to like, I th- this is a first person shooter, I guess technically, but man, does it still feel like a Metroidvania? Yeah, no, it, it is for sure. And it, it's a little more lore heavy too. If you're into that, like, if you want to play like a, you know, a Metroid game with some story, uh, you just got to scan a lot, and you can learn a lot about uh, Metroid lore. So in terms of placement, uh, I think for me, Super Mario World edges it out a little bit. But I don't know how you guys agreed. Feel. Um, that was the only game that I was considering being above it. Yeah, I mean, not for me. I I love Metroid Prime. But, you know, two to one. Don't worry, it probably is not going to live in, in Apricorn tier. So. <laughs> no, no, certainly not. Not likely. All right. Next game. Yep, Streets of Rage. All right, Streets of Rage. Man, this is like, this has got to be, uh, you know, I, I, I was a Genesis kid for sure growing up. And this, uh, I think back then I would have told you that this this was one of my favorite um Genesis, this was probably my favorite Genesis game, but uh, like as as an adult, I think it's just one of my favorite games ever. Um, and it's a beat 'em up. I like beat 'em up games. I really do. I think they're deeper than most people give them credit for. I think you have to practice so that you can dodge things and not get hit. And you know your controls are somewhat limited in those games. So you really kind of have to 
strategize in different ways. And I think that uh, as far as retro beat em ups go, the Streets of Rage uh, one does this the best, in in my opinion, the most balanced. Um, the jank isn't too hard. Like it's just you know I I just love this game, and I was glad you guys got to experience it, and I was glad to kind of sway your guys' opinions a little bit because it went up against Turtles in Time. Yeah, you, know, you guys were super tilted toward toward that uh, in the beginning, but it it almost won. Right. I, I had a lot of fun playing multiplayer with you guys. And then, like, I know you could, like, throw each other or hit each other. That was kind of fun, too. Yeah, um, and yeah. the weapons were good. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I had a lot. Yeah, like I said, I had a lot of fun just, you know, playing with you guys. The bosses were fun. They got progressively harder with each level as they should. And the, uh, I remember, like, the, the screen clearing with the police officer with, like, the rocket launcher. He's, he is the MVP, man. There is nothing more Sega than Streets of Rage. <laughs> nothing. Not even Sonic. Like, n- Sega does what Nintendo don't. You should be thinking of Streets of Rage. Yeah, I, I love Streets of Rage as well. I played it as a kid. And that soundtrack, time. the soundtrack is so good. I unironically will listen to the soundtrack sometimes, and my wife, who does not like video games at all, will be like, oh, what are you listening to? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Very good. Uh, so, do we think it's worthy of entering in Pokeball tier, or do we think there's something else in the list that should go up instead? Um, um, Cynthia, you can and go I, ahead, Dan. Cynthia and the Night or Metroid Prime, I feel like, deserves to go up. I don't know how you guys feel. Yeah, in my opinion, as much as I love Streets of Rage, personally, it is behind Metroid Prime, Symphony of the Night, Sonic 3, and Banjo-Kazooie. All right. It's definitely above the other three that are left. So, Dan, in the order, uh, Metroid Prime or Symphony of the Night, which one Which one wins out between those two? Um, Metroid Prime. I'm assuming because you said Metroid Prime first, Steve, that's also your answer? Yeah, I think it's the greatest of the things in Ibercoin. Next game, we're we're going down a few generations in tech for this next one. <laughs> Super Mario, six golden coins. This is this is another one that I didn't play back then. It's the only um, Game Boy game we played all year. Yeah, surprisingly. It's one of the first games I beat. Yeah, so obviously I played this on, on stream with you guys. I, I don't think we've ever posted it, but uh, I had a lot of fun. I thought the game was a cakewalk up until Wario's Castle, which is I think was Mario's Castle, but you know, Wario took it over. He died like 26 <laughs> times yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I had like 30 <laughs> lives, and I was like, wow, this game's easy. Like, I'm, I'm stocking up the lives. I'm coasting through this game. And I literally could not get through Wario's Castle. I shit you not, I wasted all 30 lives in that castle, and I think I only got to Wario like three times in all, in all those 30 lives. He died like a but dog. But then what happened? Oh, and then you, yeah. Depressingly, you lose all your coins. The six, so you need six coins to enter this damn castle, and you get them from all the worlds. And if you get a game over, you lose all your coins. So you you effectively have to go through these worlds and beat the bosses all over again to re-enter the castle. It's brutal. It's funny because it has a save file. It's just like <laughs> screw you. You start over. Yeah, it is brutal, man. It's the most brutal game over I think I've ever seen. Good. It teaches you something very important in life. Where do you guys want to put it? Well, I think it's definitely going to Apricorn yeah, tier, personally. For sure. Yeah, well, I guess I should say, what do we think's moving up? Um, pretty. I think Banjo-Kazooie's better. Symphony of the Night's better. Streets of Rage. Sonic 3. I think I'm in the Symphony of the Night cat- camp more than the Banjo camp. Yeah, me, uh, me too. Yeah, I, I do agree. I think... You know, Symphony Symphony of the Night is a deeper, more well-rounded game and deserves to go up. Okay. All right. Next game, Cowabunga. So, Turtles in Time is one of those games that um, I played a lot as a kid because I have um, my aunt, who has three sons and a daughter. They are all older than me, and they loved Ninja Turtles more than anything we go over and we do the whole pizza thing and watch the movies and play the games so like that was a really big part of my family dynamic with my cousins so getting to revisit the game was was awesome it's the first game we seeked out in the arcades when we went as a family and it, it's just a good rip-roaring time man like yeah. 
it just gets me in the mood to just like have a party, you know. Yeah. I and the big music. apple. Yeah. <laughs> Three a.m. <Yeah. laughs> and the music is nostalgic. You know, it's nostalgic <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's well, it's objectively worse than the Streets of Rage. Yeah, I, I would. <laughs> it's a toss up for me because they're both good. Um, but I, you know, you know, I was a big fan of Ninja Turtles too. So like, you know, I've played this as a kid. Did never beat it. Um, I I don't even think I beat it on the podcast. Like either. No, we were having trouble with the prehistoric boss. The yeah, turtle. It, it's actually pretty hard. What? I beat it. What's wrong with you guys? No, you're just a beat 'em up master. I, I smoked this game. Like I, <laughs> I, I, I played That's... Streets of Rage for 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 a whole week, and I beat this game in like, I think it was 26 minutes or something like that. Like like well, that... I beat it so fast that I checked the speed run. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your genre. You're you're a beat 'em up person, so I don't think Steve and I not so much. Oh boy, <laughs> well, I have fun with them. Yeah. It's just not like yeah. I haven't spent as much time. Right. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Sonic Three and Knuckles, I I would put above this, and I'd probably also put Banjo Kazooie above this. Maybe even Gun Knack. Agreed. I I wouldn't say Gun Knack, but definitely Sonic Three and Banjo. Yeah, definitely Sonic and Banjo are above that game. We Sounds could... like we're all Sonic. Yeah. Wait, next one. Beep beep beep. Yeah, beep 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 beep. beep. <laughs> Conquer's Bad Fur Day, man. It's like, it's. It starts out feeling like it's going to be another 3D collectathon, I think, because it's spoofing on that. But really, it's a very linear on ro- uh, like on rails uh, story the whole way through, and it's very very hard to miss the one collectible, which is cash, because like you need all of it. There's only like two missable cash uh, that you have to like go out of your way to find to, to to beat the game. But like the rest of it is completely on on rails, even though it doesn't feel that way, and like. <laughs> I don't know, like, I think some parts of it are funny, and I think a lot of it didn't really age well. I don't know how, how you guys felt about it. Yeah, I mean, I think some of the cutscenes were great. Like, especially, like, the one Steve explained with, like, the cog sli- sliding the cog on. Like, that yeah. that's pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, I think overall we had a pretty good time with yeah. the episode. I think yeah. we had more fun with the episode than we did playing it. Yeah, and then we did the sing-along with the Mighty Pooh. Like, yeah, yeah, the Mighty Pooh. It, it was one of my favorite episodes, personally. Like, yeah. from aside, like, I know that doesn't, like, count. In my opinion... This game's sitting with X7 and Splatterhouse 3. Oh, it's not that bad. It's definitely playable. Yeah. I I mean, I'm not saying it's not playable. Splatterhouse 3 is playable. Yeah. Splatterhouse 3 is broken under its own mechanics. <laughs> this 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 game at least, you know, is a cohesive whole. Yeah. Okay, well, a regardless hole. of how you feel, it's going into apricorn <laughs> yeah well i think banjo kazooie is definitely a better game yeah for sure bad for a day so yeah agreed all right so that brings us to six six games in pokeball so now things get more interesting because we need to add another tier called great ball this is still pokeball Red. but the new tier is great ball so now games can go can cause a lot of shifting right this is where the league starts to get a little bit more exciting if something enters apricorn tier that means it has to push something up and it has to push something else up through pokeball tier and something has to go all the way up to great ball tier so you can see how this is a little bit different from a traditional tier list type of system yeah so uh kind of an interesting title to start off summon knight a sword craft story yeah so i have never heard of this game before we played it I had no idea what it was, what it was about. It's basically a top-down, like Zelda style almost. You're like a blacksmith, and you you craft your own weapons and all that stuff. And you basically go in this like one dungeon, and you just fight through that dungeon, basically through the whole game. And you, there's like some tournament thing that's going on that you you participate in like every couple of days. And then the oh, and the battles are like kind of like um, the tail series where it's like side scrolly, and then you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I um, thought that that was the coolest part, but the encounter rate though. Oh yeah, I can't Holy forget that. Crap. Yeah, it was insane. It was like every we, we all beat it though. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was like a ten hour game. So still, we don't spend ten hours on every game that that that, that we play for the podcast. You did not play oh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day for ten hours. I know you didn't. <laughs> no, like five hours maybe. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. We slugged it in there. I don't know. Just... Oh no, I mean, so in my opinion, uh, Summon Knight is 
it wasn't an awful game at all, but it wasn't it wasn't like something that I would go back and replay, um, even with the short, you know, scope of the game. But I'm not going to say I didn't have any fun, because I did have some fun. And I ended up pushing through to beat it, uh, like you guys did. Yeah. Let's just say, like, the game, for me, wasn't good enough for me to want to play the second one. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just wasn't interested. Uh, I personally think that it is worse than Streets of Rage. Agreed. Turtles of Time, I think, is better. Yeah, I would. I would put Turtles ahead of it as well. So one of these games have to bump up now, right? So it's probably going to be Super Metroid, right? Because yeah. that was our first bump up. Yep. Agreed. Unless we've changed our minds, which is totally. Yep. Not yet, though. I Super Metroid's still up there for me. I don't. I don't all know right. about you guys. It's still, it's still top dog. I have a feeling it's going to float all the way to the top. Yeah, it easily. Next game. <laughs> No, it's Steve's favorite game. <laughs> oh, boy. So, Mortal Kombat 3 is exactly as you would expect, except in most ways, it's worse than Mortal Kombat 2. Yeah. I don't know what to say, guys. This is this is the game that I played the least of. Um, yeah. I tried, and I could not get past, like, the third fight. Yeah, like, the... you just get wrecked. Yeah, the CPU is... It's like they basically took the arcade version and they just ported it on the Sega Genesis without even touching it. The AI is just obscene. It knows, like, your button inputs as you press them, and they, they just know how to counter what you're doing perfectly. Yeah, if you were playing the game in, like, single-player mode, it is trash. But if you're playing it with friends, it's then still you can bad. have a bunch of fun. It's no. still bad. You know why? Well, because... it's bad if your friend knows all the combos <laughs> yeah. and you don't. I, I yeah, like but... Mortal Kombat. <laughs> but, like... If you if you don't know the combos, then uh, then every character is is the same character. Well, on the arcade cabinet, didn't they have, like, and in the instruction booklet, like how to do combos? Right, but they're no, really, we didn't have that. They're really convoluted with a K. I don't convoluted, know, I just, crappy like, combos. I I know <laughs> it is a meta, and I know it's a good game. But if you're just someone that's never played it before and you're going to pick up and play it, I think for the masses, it's a pretty terrible game. Like, oh, yeah. For me, it's, it's not hitting Pokeball tier. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, okay, for... so we're, we're kind of unanimous there. I'd, I'd put X7 up before I'd put that there. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's that's reaching. <laughs> well, I think we're pushing up Streets of Rage here. Yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. which means we got to push up Pokeball tier again. Um, Probably, I don't know, man. Super Mario World. Right? Yeah, in my opinion, personally, I don't know how you guys feel, I feel like it's between Super Mario World and Sonic 3 overall. I think it's Super Mario World, personally. Yeah. It's time for round two. Fight! <laughs> uh, Street Fighter, on the other hand, uh, I had a surprisingly good time with Street Fighter, but I kind of like fighters, and I had a good time playing with you guys. Like, I even bought a Sega pad for it. Wow, like a like a, like a like a Bluetooth Sega <laughs> pad for it. It was I, I had a good time with this, and you know, uh, I think someone in our league is going to pick a Street Fighter game too, and I'm excited for that. And when we played it, I kind of got a little bit of Smash Bros. Um, flashbacks because we're all pretty intuitive gamers, and like I thought we uh, we had some good matches despite like I think I played it more than you guys, so I think there was a little bit of tilt in my favor, but I feel like we still had some good matches. Yeah. So I'm like a Ken fan, so I like to use them in like most Street Fighter games. And I I haven't really played uh, Street Fighter 2 all that much, but um, I was playing them, and he, I don't know, he just didn't feel good to me. And I ended up you know playing all the characters, and I ended up landing on Chung Lee, like oddly enough, as like being one of my best characters when I was playing you guys. Uh, I played Bison and Ken. I had fun with it, and um, like definitely more fun than. Then Mortal Kombat 3, easy. Oh, yeah. it's a breath of fresh air next to, <laughs> next to Mortal Kombat. Like, it actually felt like a real fighting game. Like, I I'm sorry, but when you pick up a fighting game for the first time, you should be able to pick a couple of characters and recognize that they're different. <laughs> like, with if you picked up Mortal Kombat f for the first time and nobody ever told you about it and, and you'd never seen it, you're like, all right, Blue Ninja, these are his moves. Okay, <laughs> fine. I lost. Let me try Yellow Ninja. Same moves. <laughs> Yeah, they all you'd got be, the same normal. So, you'd be so confused. But, yeah. you know, Street, Street Fighter is a real fighting game. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, that being said, um, as far as placement, I feel like it goes into Pokeball and pushes something Agreed. up. Agreed. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it starts in the middle. You guys don't think Gunnack's better than Street Fighter? 
No, probably yeah. not. No, no. Way, dude. No, but but I will say that Gunnack is next in that apricorn apricorn tier to go up. <laughs> Over Summon Knight? I think so. It was oh, a really, really well polished NES game. I Yeah. Uh for me it's Sonic and Knuckles in this tier goes up, but I don't know how you guys feel it, about it. For me it would be uh Symphony of the Night, but whatever Steve Ooh, wants. I have to be the tiebreaker. I think slightly in Sonic and Knuckles' favor. Slightly. All right. Mega Man Battle Network 3. So we all have tons and tons of nostalgia for this game in high school. The second most cable clubby game on our yeah. list, I'd say, behind Melee. Yeah, so when I first, like, I think you guys were playing it before I did. Like, you guys were playing Mega Man Battle Network 2, and I, I never even owned it. But I hopped on the train with uh, Mega Man Battle Network 3, and, you know, I didn't really know anything about it. Like, it's basically almost like a card battler with, like, the chips and whatnot that land sends you but like i had i fell in love with this game and the fact that like you know you could play with your buddies and like battle your buddies chips and yeah we went back and forth a lot with this game i even squeezed a few net battles in during our week there like I, we, we were like we had a scene going like there were like six people playing this game with us in our in our in our discord which i thought was so much fun i think this was pretty early in our in our discord launch I think yeah. this was really the first time the community really got involved with it. Right. And I think that made it so much more fun for us. Um, yeah. But like, you know, and and Dan, you you like use the opportunity to like to like hundred percent. Yeah. File so, you, you yeah. Started, so I got right? seven stars on the um, the collection that they released not too long ago, and I'm just surprised, just like how much content is in just this little cartridge. It's insane. Like you can spend. Like, easily trying to 100% this game especially if it's your first time trying to 100% it you can spend like 90 hours trying to do it it's crazy yeah uh, the game is um, it I don't want to call it like a hidden gem but in our high school it was pretty popular within our friend group but if you ask any random gamer if they played Battle Network most of them haven't they're uh, lost I, I think it's a little bit of a of 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 an obscure title, um, I think by this point people had fallen off the Mega Man train. Like I think the people that were uh, who liked Mega Man, who are slightly older than us, were like, "Oh yeah, that's that's kid stuff." But we were like the right age at the right time, and I think there's I think there's meat on the bone here, um, and I think that if you gave it a shake, like you'll find the gameplay is so good. Yeah, um, even though the story's crap. But yeah, uh, but the, actually, yeah, the story's you not know... too bad in this one. But the it later later in the series it gets terrible. But you want to know my hot take? What's that? I think it goes between Super Metroid and Super Mario World. Oh yeah, I, I think I think it goes all the way up to Great Ball. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'm I'm in agreement with that. So cable clubby right there. <laughs> I, hey, hey man, it's our, anybody listening it's our if show. you haven't played a Battle Network game, <laughs> yeah, it's our show. Like the Battle Network <laughs> game's going to the top. <laughs> Ninja Gaiden. Ooh. So, for Ninja Gaiden, the game is pretty difficult for people who haven't experienced it before. But the depth that they got in this game that seems so simple is pretty amazing, really. Like, I beat the game, uh... I don't know, probably like... <laughs> ten times? <laughs> yeah, at least ten times uh, over the two weeks that we played. And uh, it's just one of those games that I could just keep playing. It's like a game that I could see myself speedrunning because I just have so much fun playing it. Weren't you like posting like in Discord? Was it your time or like how many times you got hit or something? No, it was minimal, minimal deaths. Oh, that's what it was, yeah. yeah he did it in like one death. He's such a monster. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. My yeah. my first time beating it, I had to save state out like, like crazy to beat it, and I do not use save states when I play games for the most part. Yeah. So I save stated it just to practice the final boss, and then and then and then let him kill me to do it without without save stating. Yeah. I was. Yeah. yeah the ending is brutal. Once I finished it, I went back and did a save state to get it down um, to be like a science because beating it was almost luck the first time. Um, but I wanted to get it down, and I wanted to get down as little deaths as possible. Um, I I had so much fun with this game. Yeah. I think the big surprise was, unlike other platforms, you're not rewarded for being careful. Like, you are rewarded for, like, going fast. as fast as you can 
in, in <laughs> the original Ninja Gaiden. Sonic. Yeah. <laughs> like the original blue blur. Yeah. <laughs> there's like there's like a couple spots where you want to like back up the screen to like to use the game's like built in jank against it. Yeah, the spawn. And it it spawn almost enemies. feels like it's intentional. Like it's so, it was such a cool play. Yeah, I feel like we really had a good time with that too. I feel like we had good Discord hype around this one too. Yeah, it was. I had a lot of fun with this game too. Very hard. So I struggled with like the second to last boss, the boss that goes side to side with the fireballs. Oh my god, dude! Everyone in history who's ever played this game struggled with that boss. Yeah, that boss is a nightmare. I had I a safe state like, like crazy a, on that boss. I used like a wall clinging method where I was like <laughs> up on the wall and like where I was at, he couldn't like hit me. And then I would jump off and hit him a couple times and jump back yeah. to the wall. Like, I, was, I was playing with Steve and he was like trying to coach me through that whole fight, you know. Total cheese. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? If so you cheese fun. an NES boss, don't feel bad about it. Don't. Yeah. I mean, they're they cheesing it. you essentially, so. Yeah, no, they absolutely deserve it. Especially those direct to home ports. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, for me, this is a Pokeball. Yeah. Right same. now. Right now, I don't expect it to stay in Pokeball, but this is a Pokeball. Yeah, I mean, it, it's got a hard time competing with some of these Pokeball tier games, mm -hmm. but it goes in that tier right now. Yeah, I for me, I it's better than everything in Apricorn. Yeah, I, for me in Pokeball tier, I see, in my opinion, I see about like three or four games that I would bump before Ninja Gaiden. I think for me, it's probably Castlevania. Yeah, but if it's for the Wii, it's Metroid Prime. <laughs> You know, I think that Castlevania Symphony of the, of the Night is slightly better than Metroid Prime. Yeah, I would I would bump it up for sure. Unless it's for the Wii, then it's Metroid. Yeah, Prime for me though is definitely got it. Can't stand Pokeball here. No way. No, there's no way. We still have a couple yeah. games down there. Okay, next game, Vigilante. The one thing about this game is how shocking it was when you turn it on for the first time and you get that like seventies like dear God. <laughs> Can you dig it? <laughs> I have one word for this game. Forgettable. I... Is it, though? Because <laughs> I think my word for it is unplayed. I think people talk <laughs> a lot of smack, and they just haven't played it. Because once you get that this is like a car rally with disco, you you don't forget it. Like, it's just... That, uh, that theme is just so uh, odd. It's like it, it disco, is. time <laughs> travel, aliens, sugar rush. Go. Like... Yeah, I, I know we played this alongside Twisted Metal for a Coliseum episode, but like going from Twisted Metal two to Vigilante eight, I just uh, I don't know. I, the game runs better, don't get me wrong, like the FPS wise, but everything else, man, I don't know. I just I wasn't about it. Yeah, it 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 goes down like like dog water. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah. But it has some some cool themes. Everything else in it is. I not, I did like the cool. uh, the aesthetic looks to it though. Like when you like got upgrades for your vehicle, it actually like showed on your vehicle, which was pretty cool. You know what I didn't like? Leveling up your vehicle, but then getting punished when you lose and losing your permanent stat. Yeah, buffs. that's garbage. That's that's so wrong. Can you imagine if it took like Tony Hawk Pro Skater? Like, when you wiped out, you just lost some of your stat points that you earned during this? No. <laughs> All your special moves that you've known? That that, that, that would have, like, destroyed the entire game. Well, like, you don't know it, how to nose grind anymore. Frankly, it did for me, for Vigilante. In fact, I would put it down in, in Apricorn. There are better games Agreed. in, in, in Apricorn. Send it down. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think either Gun Knack or Summon Knight moves up. Um, uh, Gun Knack for me. Yeah, it would have been seven night for me, but I'll say I'll say gun neck. Okay, so now we're up to Pokeball. What are we pushing up? Prime for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Prime. The other one, okay. the other one would be Banjo for me. But yeah, Prime. Prime's a little bit ahead of it for me. Yeah, it was between Prime and Banjo as well. Right. So it's that time again. We add a new tier. Don't be and afraid getting... to fight for your game, Steve. And I'm getting well, good at it. Well, two people already said it. Yeah. Like... Okay. I mean, you can still voice your opinion. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta sway. Metroid Prime's a great game. I'm not gonna sit here and <clears throat> and argue about it. Banjo's a really good game too, but Metroid Prime made made history, you know. Next game. Okay. Uh, we now have an Ultra Ball tier. Exciting. So <clears throat> Twisted Metal 2, we just talked about this a little bit. So yeah, in my opinion, this is just a bet straight up better game than Vigilante 8. 
Um, I just think the characters are cooler. The um, just the basic mechanics are better. The music is insane. Like I, I love the music in this game. I, Calypso is like awesome as kind of like a antagonist. Basically, when you like when you beat the game, your champion or whatever your vehicle gets to have a wish, and he kind of like takes it to a literal state, or like say like. For instance, monkey's paw. Monkey's paw. Mon- monkey's paw. That's a better word for it. For example, like Sweet Tooth will say, "I want to." What does he say? Well, he wants to be like a bug or something, and he, he like legit like grants it. I, well, Sweet Tooth is a bad example because he's weird. Yeah, but... but what's another one? There's um oh Warthog, where he says he wants to be young. He wants a young body. So Calypso gives him a young body, but keeps his old face. Yeah, he still he still has an old head. So yeah. he's like, oh, if you win next year, you can wish for you can wish for a young head. Yeah, what a jerk. So just the whole theme of the game it's just it's so nineties. Like I love it. I know. I didn't I didn't play this game back then, but playing it brought me nostalgic like back for a very specific time when I was listening to like Lincoln Park Hybrid Theory <laughs> and like Disturbed and you know Doug and I were playing Nightmare Creatures. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Big long leather trench coats, you know that 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 whole thing. The, the, it 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 was a vibe. Yeah. You look at that cover. Look at the cover. I know. Look at it, Axel. Like Axel on, it. Yeah, on top like, of Twister. There. Yeah, it's great. What is more '90s than <laughs> than the cover of Twisted Metal Two? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. <laughs> that being said, the game's just for me. It's okay. I, for me, yeah, but I think it goes in Pokeball. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. For me, it lands in Pokeball somewhere. Yeah, we don't like. Yeah, definitely Pokeball. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to push up. Uh... Banjo, I think. Yeah, I Banjo. think Banjo's the next best game. All right, then we're going to push something up to Ultra. I think we all know. Yeah, Mega Man Battle Network 3. Uh, I, wouldn't, for... I wouldn't disagree with that answer, honestly. Oh, uh... oh it gets spicy now. But Super Metroid is so good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got to be Super Metroid. Uh, you guys are letting your unbiased show. Okay. No, no, I mean... <laughs> Our unbiased, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> no, Battle Network 3 is definitely going to go up there. I can I can tell. It's me, Ore no Riori. Oh, another one. So this was a games. strange little demo title that the States got. So we ended up having to play it <laughs> in Japanese. And... <laughs> Amazing that no one's made a patch for this yet. Bear <laughs> Um So it's it's basically uh, a bunch of cooking mini games, uh, and there's a little story that you follow, and uh, there's some like boss fights, and the whole point is to like give your opponent trash, kind of like Tetris. Um, like if you do well and you do the right tasks, you give them a bunch of extra tasks to do. And, you know, you're doing all kinds of stuff like cutting stuff and cooking things, flipping hamburgers, salting fries, all kinds of crazy stuff. You know what I was surprised um, about was uh, how innovative, especially for the time, how they utilize the uh, analog sticks. Well, yeah, because it was, because those, it was like, a tech demo for the for the analog sticks. It was just so right. great. Like, you know, pouring the beer where, like, you kind of, like, had to, like, tilt your stick into, like, a J shape to, like, kind of, like, Pour the beer at a perfect ratio. That I was just dual stick thing yeah. I was surprised. Was brand new. I was yeah. surprised, like how innovative it was, because like games today, like don't even do that. Like I was just like, wow. Like I'm surprised we never got it. Yeah, it would be uh, a cool game in English, or even better in English for us to have actually like seen the description of what to do and like know <laughs> what's going on really. I, but, yeah, um, I think that's its only downfall. If like there was like a English version of this game, I would it would be high tier for sure. You guys, you guys remember the rotary phone? Oh like I don't know God. what the problem was, but like basically, like 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 if I got the rotary phone event, my run would just be over. I'm just like yeah, <laughs> well, the, the the way I'm playing through this game is just hoping I don't get the rotary phone problem. Like, yeah, because it was random. But I have to say, even though it, it was it was in Japanese. Like I, I downloaded an app that let my phone look at at Japanese text and translate it to get through the menu, but after that, I didn't I didn't use my phone again. Like after I knew where to go, because I thought it was uh, pretty savagely um, intuitive. Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, it was also on Rails. So yeah, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's not a heavy dialogue game. Right. Yeah, I didn't use any help. I just navigated through the first couple menus until I got into like the single player mode, and I was. 
that was good from there. I think this game is really, really good. I had a, I had a really good time with it, and I think it's very innovative. Even by today's standards, I don't think there's many games that are like this. Like, there is, like, a Cook and Mama game series, uh, but I don't think it's quite the same. I loved how, like, snappy and, like, frivolous this was. It was yeah. kind of like, um, like, WarioWare, almost. Right. Where, yeah. like, all the games you do are, like, micro games. For me, I actually would stick this in Great Ball. So, for me... Uh... This this is teetering on the line of uh, Pokeball and Apricorn. Um, yeah, and for me, it's it's like between Ninja Gaiden and Gunnack. Yeah, I. All right, all right, I'm outvoted. <laughs> all right, that's how I feel. Like, you think it's better than Streets of Rage? I don't. I don't think Streets of Rage will stay in Pokeball. I just think that this one doesn't belong in Pokeball either. I honestly well, think, might move up. But... I think this game would have been Great Ball if we could play this in English. But the, the fact that definitely. we don't. Definitely. Definitely. That's no the only thing that's holding does. it back. <laughs> All right. So what do we bump it up? Um, me, personally, it would be, for me, it would be Twisted Metal 2. But obviously, I know you two wouldn't go for that. For me, it's between Streets of Rage and Ninja Gaiden. Uh, it's Streets of Rage for me. All the way. So that's two for Streets of Rage. One, one for Ninja Gaiden and one for... Twisted Metal. All right. Now we shuffle up again. Great ball tier. Battle Network 3 for me. Battle Network 3. Yeah, I agree. It's so good. Super Mario Land. What? (laughs) (laughs) Oh. Well, Super Mario World, in my opinion, is third right now. All right. Next game. So I opted to take this one because it's the least spooky of the spooky games that we played all three in a row, which I absolutely hate. Not a big spooky game person. Although Parasite Eve was okay for a time. Uh, I think it's so this this game while playing through it made it on my number one this game needs a remake list I think stuff in this game is perfect like cr- like the creature design and the storytelling I think are great uh, the mechanics and the actual like RPG style using one character is not good it's like it's like Dragon Warrior 1 bad like it has all the same problems it's slow it's it's repetitive like, if you gave this the Final Fantasy VII Remake treatment, it would be awesome. Yeah, I like, agree. And, you know, that's kind of where... And, and like, you, you can't even beat it uh, with with one playthrough because the, the real ending necessitates you doing a new game plus. Like, Oh, it's... yeah, because you have to go through, like, that additional tower that you have to climb and whatnot. I forgot about that. And I just felt like all the weapons felt samey, even though you got a grenade launcher, even though you got a shotgun, like it, nothing really operated the way I felt like it should. So, yeah. I don't know. And I was, um, I was kind of unimpressed with the magic, you know, it's just so hard to make things work when you're just a solo, like protagonist in an RPG, essentially, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, you could move around and shoot, but it was basically like turn based if you want to really get down to it. And it's just hard making that work with just the one single protagonist. I wasn't character. digging the whole like you have ammo thing because you had so much ammo, you never ran out of ammo. Like, yeah, it's not possible. Yeah, it definitely you know it didn't fit the bill with like you know survival horror because like that's a big thing where like resources are limited, and I, I did not feel that way at all in this game. <clears throat> but other than that, yeah, I think this game would, like you said, would be an awesome remake. Yeah, I do think I it's very innovative fun. though. Very yeah. innovative, right? Like, there's no horror RPG style games quite like this, right? Yeah. Like, I, I still think it's a must play. Like, like if you're like, give me a list of, of like, I don't know, probably maybe if we get to twenty games for the PlayStation One that I must play in 2025, uh, Parasite Eve would probably be one of those. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. As far as placement, um, I'm thinking. As of right now, probably Pokeball. I was thinking Great Ball just because a lot of the games we have down in Pokeball are multiplayer just by that same virtue. Not as great nowadays because people don't play games in the same room. Yeah, what do you think, Steve? Do you think that it is better than everything in the Pokeball tier right now? I think I would play it over those. Like if you gave me these seven games and said play one, I would be in the mood for Parasite Eve more often than I would the other ones because I don't usually have a friend to play with. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think Ninja Gaiden is probably play better because it's like that game is so good where you can just keep playing it and get better and better. And I, I do like that about that. 
you know, you don't need any buddies for that. Yeah, personally, uh, out of everything in Pokeball, I definitely had the most fun with Ninja Gaiden. Okay. Ninja Gaiden it is. All right. Who we bump it up to... So Ninja Gaiden moves up to Great Ball tier, and who are we bumping up to Ultra Ball tier? It's got to be SMW. Yeah. Super Mario World, yep. Okay. Next game. Resident Evil 2. So this is a series I kind of stayed away from as a kid. I didn't really play it too, too much until I was, you know, in my early 20s, I think. But then I just, I fell in love with it after that. Resident Evil 2, like, just improved so much over the first one. The scenarios were vastly different where it's like they were on two separate discs and whatever you did in one, on one scenario it affected the other scenario. So, like, there was a lot of combinations you could do with, like, you know, subsequent playthroughs, you know, by mixing and matching the uh, the, the scenarios. And I just love the, the whole survival horror of it where it's like, you, you know, your ammo is limited. I know tank controls are kind of dated in nowadays, but like back then it, you felt so restricted that like it added to the horror value in my opinion. But um, yeah, I don't know what you guys thought of Resident Evil 2, but like it's for me, it, it's a good game. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it has some old, some pretty tough aging problems with this, the cameras, the controls, the enemies coming from off screen, you know, that kind of thing. But, I mean, overall, it is one of the... It's probably my favorite of those style Resident Evil games. And, um, I mean, I personally don't like it better than anything in Great Ball. But I do like it better than some things in Pokeball. I think that, like, I I was impressed uh, with how many things didn't... Uh did age well in in this game like the jump scares were getting me so bad <laughs> like i was sitting there playing on a little four inch screen and like i'm such a big baby i don't like horror games at all and like i'm sitting there it's like 5 30 in the morning and i'm playing and, and like you know the zombie arms come flying through the wood panels and i'm like oh my god and, like <laughs> <laughs> done <laughs> yeah like and you know i got like killed like four times trying to figure out the controls on the first screen yeah that's pretty common I don't know so why like, the game does that to you, where it just throws you right in the middle of four zombies. That's I'm, so unforgiving. Yeah, I, I'm I'm just going to, like, abstain, because I really am not a good judge <laughs> of these games. Like, if you gave me this list of games, and you were like, play one, it's probably, like, never going to be Resident Evil, or, <laughs> frankly, Silent Hill that's, that we'll talk about soon. <laughs> it's Capricorns here for him. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm just not, I'm just not that kind of gamer. Yeah, for me, obviously... You know, you guys have different opinions, but this would be a great ball for me. So I guess it comes mm-hmm. down to Steve, which one he would think. Probably meet in the middle, right, with Pokeballs here? I mean, I, I'm i okay with putting it in great ball. I mean, if you don't like it, you don't like it. It's, it's par- perfectly no, fine. I, it's my favorite of the Resident Evil's, like the the original Resident Evil like trilogy. Yeah. Um. And I mean... I'm looking at it like this. So, would I rather by myself play Gunnack or Resident Evil 2? Probably Resident Evil 2. And then looking at the other games, most of those are like... So, like, Ore no Ryuri is fun, but the novelty kind of wears off. And Parasite Eve is a flawed game, even though I had some fun doing it. But the other three games in that category are all multiplayer. So, I'm kind of looking at this from the playing alone, like... Is it a better game? Obviously, games that you play with friends have a a dynamic that's really hard to rate on a tier list. Yeah. Because it, it's based on how you and your friends have fun and get along. So, personally, Resident Evil 2 belongs in the Great Ball tier somewhere. Fair enough. What do we bump it up? For me, it's Castlevania. I can agree with that. We did put Sonic and Knuckles over it last time, though. I don't know if I'm still feeling that. Are you still feeling that, Steve? It's up to you guys. I mean, it's always going to be Castlevania for me, so. So we're getting more into the nitty-gritty details, right? Well, it's getting harder. It's getting harder. (laughs) Right. So if we look at Castlevania versus Sonic 3 and Knuckles, I think that Castlevania has a deeper gameplay, like a deeper equipment and, and all of that. I just like the atmosphere and more. Like 
straight up. I, well, I just definitely think like that, Sonic's like, atmosphere more, and yeah. and I like the soundtrack and everything that it has going on. Yeah, personally, Castlevania, in my opinion, is slightly better, but not by a lot. Like Sonic Three and Knuckles is really good, but I think Castlevania just you know I think time gave it an edge. You know, PlayStation One. Ready? Let's move on. Silent Hill. <laughs> We all had fun with this one. We had, we had a blast playing this one together. I was surprised, honestly. But it was way more fun with you guys. And I think it skewed my idea of the game when it came to the Coliseum. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I do think it's... I like, I, I played enough of it. I do think it's better than, than, than Resident Evil 2. Like, I think it ages a lot better. Yeah, after you get past that first part in the town, it starts to get a lot more fun. It's like Zelda, uh, except horror. Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. So, like, you know, it has a lot more of, like, a, um, of a run around and explore feeling to me than Resident Evil 2. Like, Resident Evil 2, I, it also has that. But something about Silent Hill just, like, made it extra creepy like it's dark and your radio statics going on and you got your flashlight and you can hardly see whereas i feel like in resident evil 2 it was really well lit for a zombie apocalypse type scene yeah it's not it's not too dark now that i think about it i mean a lot of zombie movies are like like the like the dawn of the dead remake takes place almost entirely during the day and in a way, like, Resident Evil 2 feels kind of like an action game, whereas Silent Hill feels like a scary game, like sneaking around I like game. The, um, the two different worlds. I was impressed by how it messes with you. Oh, like, yeah, we, that too. Like, we, we created these magical memories as 35-year-old adults, you know, of, like, when Steve was on the elevator going up and down the floors, couldn't figure out where to go, got back on the elevator, and there was, like, that, that, that extra button, and we were like, was that there before? Yeah, or like, or is there always and, the floor four? Like, it's just this weird thing. Yeah, or the bathrooms in the schoolhouse, where it's like yeah. you go in one bathroom and then you leave, and all of a sudden you're magically on the second floor. It was just so trippy. Or when you go to the other world in the hospital, and all of a sudden it's just like grates that you look like you could like fall through the middle, and it's like rusted, and it's like completely different. Yeah, I I would not play it by myself, but I would play it with you guys because it is it is a lot of fun. Yeah, no, I I was pleasantly surprised when I play it with you guys. And it's like, it's a lot darker than it's than you like expect a PlayStation game to be. Yeah, like if you look at Resident Evil, yeah, there's like some gore or whatever, but like the beginning scene when you're looking for your kid and that like body's hanging upside down and speared on the fence and all that, it was kind of shocking. Yeah. And I also um, like the uh, the melee weapons were like a huge, huge upgrade over uh, Resident Evil. <laughs> the hammer. The yeah. knife in Resident Evil is unacceptable <laughs> occupation of your inventory. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is just not cool. Uh, it's such it goes a in jerk great ball move. tier. Such a jerk move. Yeah, it definitely goes in great ball tier. Yeah, agreed. You know, the more I talk about Resident Evil, I want it to go back down, and I want Parasite Eve to go up. Oh boy! I mean, Resident Evil makes me so mad. I don't think we we haven't had a game that like straight up went down yet. I don't think. No, I'm thinking about it though. That's where I'm at with it. <laughs> uh, not me. That's I. Right. I like it where it is. <laughs> what are we moving up from Great Ball Tier to Ultra? Um, Prime for me. I think it's Sonic. Yeah, it's Sonic for me. Sonic. I do love Prime. But out of these two, I'm probably in the mood to play Sonic more. But that might also be because I'm a parent and I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> it just stress me out to play Prime. Prime is, is so good, though. It is. It's very good. But, I mean, Sonic is... It, it, it competed with Nintendo for a reason. Unlike our next game... Oh my god, dude. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I want to preface this with... My love for the person that pitched this game is much greater than the love I had for this game playing through it. <laughs> you I know, and... love card games. I wanted this to be really good. I was thinking to myself, oh, this could be like, you know, a more like awesome Yu-Gi-Oh, like a less for kids version of Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, and I just, I think some of it works and 
It's weird because again, this is like the Summer Night thing. We all beat it, yeah, for some reason. But like, there's just so much about this game. It's very that is, short, like, unfinished. Yeah, I think I beat it in like yeah, six like, or five hours. Yeah, I think it was five. Something yeah, like that. But still, we've played other games for less time. I think this game could have been great if it was like executed better. There's just a... I bet you Lost Kingdoms 2 is pretty good. Yeah, probably. But like this game left such a sour taste in my mouth that like I I don't even want to try it. Like it's like I'm good. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to, yeah. you know, emulate it then Yeah. I know I'm probably going to get some some hate for this, but GameCube has this this like tendency to publish these games that just waste your freaking time. <laughs> like Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door is one of them. And uh, the Pokemon Coliseum game, like that, those those two games, another bad one. And they waste it with such little substance. And this game falls squarely in that category. Like, Nintendo had this soulless phase that persisted, like, all the way through the 3DS before they really got their soul back in the, in the, in the Wii U and the, and the uh, Switch later. Like, and this is, like epitomic of that. Yeah, but this is era. from software. It's not... Right, but this is the kind of crap that Nintendo would put out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I play... Like, this didn't make it on the PlayStation. Yeah, this... In my opinion, it was unacceptable the way it was handled. It, yeah, it feels, Summon Knight's better. It feels so unfinished. Like, you don't ha- you don't even have, like, a basic melee attack. It, it That, to me, is like, what, what were you thinking? Yeah, the first time you run out of cards in a boss fight and you just have to stand there and die, it's like you realize the the weight of how broken uh, this this game is. Yeah. yeah, I just and like there's stuff in the game I never even got to see. Like, like oh, if you play certain cards, they they combine and do something. Like you just can't do it. Like, yeah, it's just not possible. Your hand's only four big. Like, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, and, and uh, it's probably Apricorn for me. Yeah, easily. It's probably, in my opinion, it's probably the worst game we've played. I did not enjoy it. Yeah, maybe. X7 might be slightly worse. Nah, I, I like, because it's probably because I'm an X fan. I, I enjoy X7 more than I Lost Kingdoms. <laughs> X7 hurts me so so deeply. <laughs> it's like that meme where uh, the guy is talking to another guy, and he's, he's like, does the dog bite? And the owner goes, no, but he can hurt you in other ways. And then he insults the dude. So we got a game that needs to bump up, huh? From Apricorn? Something, something has to go up from Apricorn and push everything else up. Oh, boy. It's either Sun and Night or Super Mario Land 2. Yeah. I'm... You know, Super Mario Land 2 felt like a baby gas game. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Like that. It's not a bad game. It's just so ridiculously easy. Yeah. Like, Ages three and up, easy. Not, <laughs> not, not in a good way. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I have nostalgia for it, so I could be clouded a little bit, but I'm okay with Summon Knight moving up personally. Summon Knight I, had instructions and mechanics. I'm gonna go with Summon Knight. Yeah. Too. Also, the storyline was, you know, I, I'm not gonna say it was great, but it was fleshed out at least. I'd hear an argument for Conquers too, just because of its uniqueness. Yeah. And, like, you know, there's nothing like it still to this day. And, quite frankly, I think Nintendo wants you to forget about it. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. I think I would pick Conquers over Summon Knight. I think me too. Uh, I, I personally wouldn't. I beat Summon Knight and had some fun. I just couldn't get into Conquers very much. I'll let Don be the decider on that one. Yeah, I think I think for me it's Conquers out of the two. Yeah. But maybe closeted Summon Night. Like, I maybe think Summon Night, but I wouldn't say it out loud not to offend Mixed Company. I mean, <laughs> Summon Night lets you pick between the, the weapons you want to use and has interesting battle mechanics with weapon breaking styles and all kinds of stuff like that. I just feel like, you know, there's more to it than Conqueror's had. All right. So something has to move up from Pokeball. I think it's Parasite Eve. Hands down. Yeah. I, I agree. I'm okay with that, too. Something moves up from Great Ball. I think it's either Prime. Or I think it's between Prime, Silent Hill, and Banjo Kazooie for me. It's Prime for me. What do you think, Steve? Uh, yeah, I, I suppose it's Prime. Yeah, it is overall the better experience. Next I'm kind of surprised right now. We're sitting at um, Turtles in Time in the Pokeball tier, but Streets of Rage in the Great Ball tier. It snuck its way in there somehow. <laughs> hey, that's how it, that's how it works. It's a better game. It should have won. That's how it works. Game. You know, so like just. You know, Don could have just single-handedly did that. You know, it's how it works. 
<laughs> fought honorably. <laughs> so, new tier, huh? Yep. It is time to make the final tier. Boy. The Master Ball Cup. We need to stop saying tier. It's not a tier list, darn it. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get used to it over time. Master Ball Cup. Oh, boy. So, the next Dan game... wants this one to go right in there. Oh, yeah. I know it won't, but it for me it would, probably. <laughs> so, Mega Man Legends... You know, I have so much nostalgia for this game as a kid. Yeah, I remember my father going to Toys R Us and picking this game up. And I remember him playing it first. And, you know, I was actually scared of this game at first because, you know, the music and whatnot. But, you know, like, you know, probably like a couple weeks later, I actually went back and played it. But, like, it's just, for me, it's just so good. It's like, kind of like Mega Man Legend of Zelda. You know, you get, like, you know, buster part upgrades to make your buster stronger. You get special weapons. You can... Mega Man Legends of Zelda? Yeah. It's it's good stuff. And then you got, like, a currency system, just like, you know, like an RPG where you can farm money, buy equipment, get stronger. Um, you got dungeons. The story is okay. It's not, it's not the greatest, but... For me, I liked the community involvement in this game, too. Oh yeah, that it's it's somehow haphazardly turned into a race that like you you push you you put up your time like in in our collaboration Discord and I forget it was like six hours and like fifty minutes or something like that and you're like yeah I don't expect you guys to get such a fast time <laughs> and I was like it's on right so then Steve and I started racing and then we had a couple other people race and we had Doug do this really extensive like research paper on how to grind uh, Zenny the fastest yeah I know. Like, it was really great. Really good memories there. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. it's crazy how much, like, the Discord picked up on this game. It was probably, like, the the best one yet, I think, right? Like, as far as Discord activity yeah, goes? Yeah, maybe. It was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It definitely is up there. Yeah, it's probably between that and Battle Network. And we had some engagement with Ninja Gaiden. Yeah. That's because Mega Man is better than everybody gives him credit for. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sad that Capcom's kind of threw Mega Man to the wayside. I, I want all new games from all existing IPs, but, you know, that's he, neither here or, or there. There's a land for you, Dan. Me, personally, you know, and this, obviously, this is probably, you know, I'm going to be biased as all hell on this one, but it goes into Master Ball for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what do you guys think it goes? Maybe. It'd have to be, like, the top six games on our list. I don't see it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm biased. You guys don't have to be. Like, if you think it's Great Ball, then it's Great Ball. It is. <laughs> All right. Steve, Steve wanted to delete it. You remember that? <laughs> there is a blatant nostalgia factor for you guys, and I understand that. But, like... I love this game so much. <laughs> is it really better than Super Metroid, Battle Network Probably 3, not. Super Mario World... <laughs> I could probably in my opinion being in, being in great ball tier. It's I think it's fine in the great ball tier. It's not a bad game at all. I'm glad I got to play it all the way through for the first time, and it makes me interested to play Legends two. And I had fun, but there were some problems. The 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 graphics and the voice acting are so good for yeah. the era. Yeah, yeah, they did a good job. It really doesn't. It really, you know, ages extremely well. But, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so what's bumping up here? <coughs> For me, it's between Banjo and Ninja Gaiden, but I want to know what you guys think. Uh, for me, I mean, I don't have, like, the nostalgic value that you have for Banjo, so for me, I would... For, I think it's Silent Hill. I was going to say Parasite Eve, Silent Hill, or Banjo, so I guess that's two for Banjo and two for Silent Hill. I don't know how that works, then. <laughs> right? But I, I voted three ways, so uh, I think I think I would rather play Banjo than Silent Hill if I have to decide between them. Fair enough. All right, we're gonna get a first I'm just glad I got it up to Ultra Ball tier. I'm what happy. Is, I could die happy. What is, what is going up to Master Ball? Super Metroid, hands down. Yeah, Man, it's Battle Network be. three. It's fairly close, but no, it's it's definitely I, soups. I, 
Yeah, I, Battle Network 3 is going to get in Mass Effect. I'll be surprised if it doesn't. I don't know. The last five games are pretty <laughs> insane. Some pretty good games down there. <laughs> well, we'll see. Right. Here's Little Samson. Little Samson was my pick for for the for the end of the year. This was like uh, this was a hidden gem. We were chided a little bit on social media for referring it uh, for referring to it as a hidden gem because <laughs> apparently everybody knows about it. But I do want to point out it is one of our least viewed episodes. Uh, so no, I think it is very much still hidden. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't even hear about it. Why is it also a gem? It. Yeah, and and we and we play video games. We played video games our, our whole lives and I'd say we're more or less into retro games. I'm probably a little bit more than you guys. But um, yeah, like so, still still hidden. Yeah, I had a lot yeah, of fun. This title was pretty cool. I really like the mechanics of uh, Little Samson, where like you yeah, got to swap we... between four characters, and they are all very unique in their own ways. And we and we had that race. Oh yeah, that's Steve, true. Which was which was a lot of fun too. Uh, I don't think we we didn't get too much engagement on it again because it's so hidden. Yeah, you know, it, like it's unfortunate, <laughs> but. But it's a very good game, uh, and and I was surprised that it has like branching paths and stuff. Like it's just, it feels very modern and very well optimized for the for the NES. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I personally, I think this is an ultra ball tier game for me. It's for me. It would I certainly will not hear any less than great. Ball. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, definitely I great was, ball for me. I was thinking great ball. I. I... So like I really liked it personally, but I had I, just Ninja Gaiden. Man, it's 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 on me. It's on me. <laughs> All right. So out of these games, I'm gonna pick two. I would put either Parasite Eve or Silent Hill up. Um, my two would be Mega Man Legends and Silent Hill. Silent Hill's okay. gonna move up then. Yeah, Silent Hill would be my next right after Gaiden. So I I agree closely. All right, so move something up out of Ultra Ball tier. Battle Network three for me. Yeah, it probably I think is. So. Yeah, probably. Well, it could get really interesting at this point, right? Because there could be games that we would have to shove down. Yeah, possibly. Nah, maybe not. All right. Next up, Final Fantasy XI being an MMO makes it kind of like um, a relic of the past. That's really kind of tough to get into and play nowadays and i think that's going to overall hurt its score for me however Let me if ask you this, were there did you guys even play it what 11 i played the crap out of that game no no i mean like during this during during the week that it was the game oh no i i know so much about this game that like i could not play for like years and still remember a ton about it Oh, yeah. Like, imprinted on me for the rest of my life. Yeah. So I'd agree with Steve's assessment, then. This is not something you go back and play, and it probably hurts its score overall. Yeah, <clears throat> it's... I, I I think it's more of, like, you had to be there when it was popular. Like, nowadays, like, if you didn't play it, it you it's very hard for someone to just go back and play it. Yeah, and the episode we did is a lot more of a retrospective, like, game of the time. Yeah. Like, if you had to rate it just as the game that it is, it and you have to exclude the social aspect. If you were if you were somebody coming in to play it now, then it's probably in the Pokeball tier, because like you can't pick the game up and just play it. You can get on a private server. You're gonna be lost as shit. Yeah. As much as I love the game, and as much as I think the game ended up being this like haphazard amazing experience that was not intended to be what it became like it it did better than it was supposed to in my opinion however it's a really hard game to place but i i'm probably gonna have to put it down kind of low because of the type of game it is yeah i mean i i kind of agree you know with that sentiment obviously like me personally like Final Fantasy XI is probably one of one of my favorite games of all time. So, like, if I was doing like a personal tier list, it would probably be Master Ball. But obviously, that's not realistic. Um, for somebody like again, if you weren't there while it was you know popular, you, chances are you, you're never gonna play it. So, I would agree and probably it's put... probably gotta go into Apricorn, right? If anybody was coming to this tier list, 
to play a game and pick up a game, that's definitely not going to be. I don't know. I think them. I think if you're reaching down there, you're probably okay getting on a private server. Yeah, I mean, I I, I would put it in Pokeball tier per- personally. Like, I, I think it would be doing the game a disservice by throwing it in Apricorn. But again, like, I'm just looking at these other ones here, and I'm like, yeah, like I don't I don't know. Okay, even even though fair. I I wasn't there, I probably still would pick this up maybe before some of these. It's a good <laughs> knowing what you know now. It's a good game if you actually like sit down and want to learn it. Like it's not bad. It's just again, it, it's hard to have people go back, you know, from a game. Especially it's like it's just not near as popular. So, so All I'm right. putting myself in the shoes of somebody that has never played any of these games before, right? And I got to pick from all of these games that I get to play, which one would I pick up knowing a little bit about them? And 11, just not a game that I think is a good pickup for somebody. Yeah, I, I'm going in it with a, like a little different. Like I'm showing a little like bias towards it because it's like, you know, I want the games that I played as a kid. Like obviously like they're better to me than obviously like, you know, say like Little Samson or I like Mega Man Legends more, straight up. It's just my opinion on certain things. Yeah, and I love Eleven too. Yeah. I mean, you and I both have thousands of days of gameplay on it over our course of our lives. Like, yeah, I kind of want to throw a little bit of my personality into the tier list. It's it's the league. The league. Oh yeah, duh. <laughs> the league. <laughs> All right, so I think uh, I I still think Pokeball tier. Yeah, I I think that's fair. Yeah, I think. Turtles moves up. If if Streets of Rage is up there, then Turtles moves up. A gun neck? Nah. Yeah, I think it's gun neck or Turtles for me. It's Turtles <sighs> and uh, Street Fighter 2 for me. That's true. Street Fighter 2 is really good. All right, so Turtles it is regardless. I heard Turtles three times. All right. All right. Something moves up from here. I really think it's Little Samson or Parasite Eve. You're real big on Parasite Eve. I'm not. Maybe no, sorry. Maybe it's Little Samson or Mega Man Legends. For yeah, me, it's actually. Samson or Legends here. Yeah, I'm going with Legends. All right here, uh, I think it's Super Mario World. Yeah. Yep. It's just so good. It's so good. Yeah, it really is. Okay, next game. Final Fantasy three slash six. So I played this game a couple times when I was younger. I never beat it. And I eventually got to beat it on the podcast, so that was good. I've always wanted to get around and actually beat it. Yeah, it's just a great. Yeah, you like, you like, almost got soft locked. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the so I, I was playing the Pixel Remaster. It has like an auto save feature, and it like screwed me over. Where it was like it saved me outside of the boss fight, and I literally he has like an auto kill move when you kill him, or not auto kill, but a move that does, like he casts his ultimate. It does massive damage. And yeah, I almost soft locked myself, but I found a way around it. But other than that, like, yeah, it was such a, it was a good experience. I enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed playing six. I mean, it was like a little bit of infighting in the, in the community too, about it that like, you know, we had one slant that came out right off the bat in favor of Chrono Trigger. And then we had like the second wave of people that were like, no, it's definitely Final Fantasy six. Yeah. Like. Hey, it, this one was a hotly contested. Yeah, uh, no, of both of the both of these games, in my <laughs> opinion, are masterpieces in their own right. Um, you know, it's just if you want like a, you know your traditional RPG with your world map and like you know your airship that you get near the end of the game. Well, you actually get it pretty early in this game. Um, yeah, it's, then it's right up your alley. Yeah, Final Fantasy VI, like insane customizability, tons of side quests. So many places to explore, a great story, a great cast of characters, like the ability to use a bunch of different people and different relics and learn all kinds of different magic and level up your characters the way you want. And like, they had pretty unique characters in this game, too. Yeah, it's still a game that's played today. Yeah, like that pick that if that pixel remaster is, is, is any bit of evidence, which I think it came out in like 2020 or like not not long before, like it's still a relatively new. Uh, you might say, edition of that game. Like, it's still very played. Like, if you think about Final Fantasy and the legacy that it has, and how a lot of people put 7 and 6 at the top of that list, I mean, it's hard-pressed to to say a lot of negative things about it. It's just a great game. Yeah, I think 
Where do you want to place it, Dan? What do you think? Um, at the very least, Ultra Ball. That's like minimum. I think it's a master for me. Yeah, I'm in the Master Ball camp yeah. personally. Fair enough. Like it, I, I could see that too. Next game is another very cable is the most cable clubby game. Yeah. So everybody knows and loves Super Smash Brothers, and Melee was kind of like the biggest jump. Like if you consider 64 to Melee, that jump was like so huge as a kid. And from Melee to Brawl, yeah, they added more characters, but it didn't feel like as big of a jump. So like when Smash Melee hit the scene, it was like, look at this game, and. I've been playing it since. Tons and tons of hours in this game. Like, I have to say, going back to it was like riding a bike. <laughs> like, it really, really was something that resonated with me so well. And, like, as soon as I picked it back up, I was, it was like back back to the good old days. Yeah. Because I, I was someone who put it down as soon as Brawl came out, and I never looked back, and I just played new new versions of Smash. But, uh, yeah, no, it, and, and Slippy. Yeah. That that was something I wanted to talk about. Slippy's here. so good. Like it's still kind of a modern game just because of Slippy. Right. Yeah, so I was talking about how like you know, Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and Turtles in Time and all those games that are multiplayer that would kind of hurt the score if you didn't have a friend to play with. Slippy negates that completely. Yeah, there's always someone to play with and lag free essentially. Yeah. Yeah, you can't you can't it, go wrong with Slippy. If you ever want to play, you know, Super Smash Brothers Melee, like Slippy's the way to go, man. Very much so. This for me personally, this is an easy master ball just because of like the history yeah. I have with this game. I think just the popularity that that I saw it have, um, and it being pretty much responsible for the friendships I have as a as as an adult, I think it's a master ball for me. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm looking at the next three contenders for me being like. Castlevania, Sonic 3, Metroid Prime, and I think Super Smash Bros. Melee is a nearly perfect game in that that group of games, the brawler type games. Yeah, like, like I I want to say that I'm that I'm biased, but like look at its legacy. It's it's that I think we played it so much because it is that good. Yeah, no it is. And and you know, I think when we talked about it on the show, we talked about it being a brawler, we talked about it being the only show in town. You know, and Smash Brothers doing its thing long before anybody else even attempted to do a brawler, and no brawlers have lived up to Smash Brothers since. And like, I just, you know, I really think it deserves its credit. I know if you look at a list like this, you might think that's crazy, but like, I, I just, you know, it's not a had had to be their thing. Like, I think you just you played it, and, yeah, and new players and, and you are knew. playing every day. Yeah, I don't know, it was so good. All right, and our final game. Boy, did we end on a high note for this year. The game of all games, <laughs> Chrono Trigger, which I had never played. I think that Shame if on I you. took one thing away from this entire podcast, it was the, the time I had with Chrono Trigger for this whole year. Like, since putting it down uh, a few weeks ago, I've considered playing another version of it, like, several times. I still think about it. It's really, really, really good game. That's insanely well balanced with like, you know, as far as like picking different characters. I just, I'm like totally over the moon with it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. I just like the the time travel aspect and how it could affect different other uh, timelines too. Like it was just so I well. Especially when it was made. Yeah, like like I didn't know I could be so blown away by a game that's that's what is it thirty years old now? Yeah, it's. It's up there for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was 94. Like, I, 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 it's so good. (laughs) Like, and I actually joined a Reddit group, like a hat, like a slash Chrono Trigger Reddit group. People are, that is a very active group. People still talk about this game a lot. Like, and there's still people, you know, chiming into that group every day saying, oh, it's my first time playing it. It's like, man, I've never had that feeling where I, where I want to say to somebody, I'm jealous. (laughs) because <laughs> I want to go back to my first time playing it, but I almost am a little bit because this it was such a good play. I couldn't I couldn't put it down. It was so good. That's how I feel about Final Fantasy XI. If I could have gone back to feel that feeling again for the first time, like I'm really happy for you that you got to play Chrono Trigger as a grown up Same, yeah. and still appreciate it for what it is. It's it's a timeless game. Excuse the excuse the expression, <laughs> but like uh, I mean. I could, I we could go on and on, but I think it's Master Ball. Like you can't, you can't, 
possibly put it anywhere else, even if we have to knock something else down and move something else up. But I, it's masterful for me. Yeah, same. One of the best RPGs for that time period. Music, graphics, atmosphere, the characters. Like, you yeah. know, even 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 the cutscenes. That that cutscene where Frog cuts the mountain just blew me away, and it's in 16-bit graphics. Yeah, like it's it's so good. This is our tier list. Yeah, it's probably my number one out of this list. All right. So, what do we think? Do we think there's any little changes that that we'd want to make? I think this is actually pretty good. This was a good method of sorting these games into cups. Yeah, I agree. Like the method that we have, it, I don't really think there's needs much changing. Really, I'm all looking right. at it, and I I'm pretty happy with where everything stands. Games we played all year, guys. We chugged. We played 31 games this year. Yeah. We drank from the fire hose. That's crazy. It almost it doesn't even feel like that. <laughs> But yeah, it's true. 31 games, man. On top of all the other games that we ended up playing in between. Yeah, because I definitely you know, new played releases. Some, some incidental games. Like I... Mario and Luigi Brothership comes out in like two weeks, and I got that pre-ordered, and I'm so excited. Oh yeah, that's a day one. <laughs> one. Did you pre-order? Yeah. From who? Target. Dude, if you pre-ordered from GameStop, you got keychains. If you pre-ordered from Amazon, you got a a fridge magnet that you can put over a picture. And if you pre-ordered from uh, Best Buy, which is what I did, there's pins. You know, we get some sneaky news in here. I guess I'm going to have to cancel my pre-order and pre-order through Best Buy. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I went for the pins. I want to put it on my Super Mario backpack. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so excited. All right, so we're going to take a quick break here, crank some of our awesome new theme music. And when we come back, we're going to do some awards for these and get our community involved. So part of our new league format is going to be uh, giving out prizes uh, to the winner of each cup. So right now we're going to uh, essentially discuss briefly and we're going to name a winner in each of these cups. And we're not, they're not in any particular order within the cups and that's by design. So um, we will start with the apricorn tier. Best of the worst. And just decide which of these games, as a group, we think is the best one of them. I think this one's unanimous. It's what is it? Probably Summon Night. Summon Night. Yeah, I actually was going to say Summon Night too. <laughs> yeah, out of those, I just think it's the most the most playable, and we all and we we beat it. We all three beat it. We all three beat Mega Man X Seven too. But yeah, we all three beat Lost Kingdoms. Why do we beat these bad games? Yeah. Did, did, all three did, did, of us did we just beat like... Splatterhouse, all three of us beat X7, all three of us beat Lost Kingdoms, all three of us beat Mario Land 2. Did we just like dig in? We were like, it can't be that bad all the way through. <laughs> and we just like beat it. What is what is wrong with us? I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, to be fair, I beat most of these games. Yeah. All right. Nice. Uh, moving on to our Pokeball tier award. Wow. Now that I'm looking at Pokeball tier, I'm surprised. Uh... Street Fighter 2 didn't move up. That's crazy. Well, it's because it's just not fun solo. Like, the the CPU does the same thing in Mortal Kombat 3 where they, like, cheese you and read your button inputs. Yeah. I think like, it's me, a great out of fighter. These, I think it's probably Street Fighter for me. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm going, like, towards a, like... Street Fighter or Final Fantasy XI, I guess. Yeah, I think that's the, what I was going to say. It was like, it's either those two for me. Uh, so let me spin it spin it this way how many street fighters are there the, i mean yeah the, a lot but gonna, arguably none without this one yeah but i'm gonna go with personally i think 11 is is the best game here like it's it's an original like there's nothing like it yeah and the amount of things you can do in that game <laughs> being an MMO it's just huge like the, it's so vast yeah I think in, in scope even though you can't play it now I feel like yeah yeah I mean if I'm gonna go with like nostalgia it's definitely 11 100% Final Fantasy 11 is our winner of the Pokeball League Mov moving up to the Great Ball League we have Streets of Rage we have Ninja Gaiden Resident Evil 2 
Parasite Eve, Little Samson, and Turtles in Time. This is gonna. This is actually a tough one. Yeah. These are all really close. Yeah. In, in my opinion. For me, though, like it's gonna be an unpopular opinion, but it it's gonna be Resident Evil Two, just because I just love the Resident Evil world and and the characters like Leon, Claire, like I just I love them all, <coughs> and I like the gameplay and the survival horror aspect of it. Even though it's a little bit dated, I, I still love it. So. so I have I have three here that I'm looking at, and it's like Resident Evil 2 is a great game. Ninja Gaiden has that whole, like, you feel yourself getting better, and it's just really, really fun to play. And then Little Samson was a real surprise for me, and I had fun playing it. I beat it multiple times. So it's somewhere between those three for me. What about you, Don? I think out of pure shock factor... I think it's probably Little Samson for me. Like, the game is just so good for for an NES title being as old as it is. Like, and so fair. It's like Contra Fair, you know? It's like that, like, timeless classic that you can go back to playing again and again and never feel like you're cheated. It's well-designed, has great bosses, great enemies, like, great movement, like, just a lot of license to the player. Um, in terms of what you can do and how you can tackle obstacles, and I beat it multiple times too. And you're right; you can do different. You can just play the game differently if you choose. Whereas a game like Ninja Gaiden is good, but you can't really like do something different. Yeah, to me, that's not like the end all be all, but it is in Samson's favor. Yeah, but you know, I'm gonna say it's Little Samson. If your vote, if your one of your vote is still Samson. Yeah, I think. I think. Well, Samson was uh, was definitely a surprise for me. It's really hard, but uh, not any harder than Ninja Gaiden. No, no, no. I mean, like it's hard. It's hard to pick oh, in this in, the, in this particular tier. Like just looking at these these games, I think it's. But I think Little Samson edges out a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, I, I I'm okay with Samson being there, and then Resident Evil Two and Ninja Gaiden for me are like died for second place. Fair enough. Little Samson is our Great Ball League winner. Golden Cartridge. All right. Ultra Ball tier. This, this is going to be a hard tier for me. <laughs> yeah. Castle, yeah. I'm pretty sure I know what your vote is. Um, <laughs> we have Castlevania, Symphony of the Night. We have Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Metroid Prime, Banjo-Kazooie, Silent Hill, and Mega Man Legends. No, I'm serious when I say this is this is a tough one actually because I I love Prime, I love uh, Symphony of the Night, and I love Legends. Now I'm just like trying to think if like if I could only play one of these games for the rest of my life, which would it, what would it be? Well, I, I'm just gonna pick those three, whatever you guys pick. Um, let's see what overlaps. I think for me, out of these, uh, it's probably Mega Man Legends. Very hesitantly. Mega Man Legends or Sonic and Knuckles. Just because, like, there's a lot of good replay value in Mega Man Legends. Like, it's just, it's such a quick game. You can beat it fast. You can play hard mode. You can play easy mode and run everything over. You can have a good time doing it, no matter how you do it. Um, I don't feel that same way about Symphony of the Night. I played it. I think the Upside Down Castle is cheap. Um, it's fine. It's a it's a great game, but it's not a game that I've thought about going back and playing again. Whereas Mega Man Legends, I absolutely do think about playing it um, every now and again. Okay, okay. And I played Sonic Mania this year, which unfortunately took my top spot for Sonic game. It's better than Sonic 3 and Knuckles. So <laughs> I'd say it's Mega Man Legends. Well, the only games here that I would consider going back and replaying are both nostalgia reasons, Sonic 3 and Banjo. But as far as like the game that I think is the best... Out of all of these, I have a hard time picking, but like Metroid Prime, I feel like might be the best achievement out of the games here. Uh, you know what? You might actually be right. I might, I might be wavering there. Metroid Prime is really good. Especially like if it's thinking on the about Wii. what what it did <laughs> at Wii its one. time. Yeah, <laughs> the Wii version. <laughs> and and like think about how many people are looking forward to Prime 4 coming out. There's a bunch of people that want Mega Man Legends 3, admittedly, but nobody's clamoring for a new Castlevania game right now. Nobody's clamoring for a new Sonic game, really. They do, 
but everybody is so hyped up for Metroid Prime 4. I mean, look at its legacy. It's a well-rounded, extremely well-rounded game. Yeah. I, no, I would be happy with that one. Cause I have I have seen the light. I, it's Metroid Prime. I like Prime. Yeah. Yeah, Metroid Prime. Can't be mad Samus at that is, one. Samus is awesome. Yeah. Our Ultra Ball League winner is Metroid Prime, which leads us to our final, and some might argue the total league champion, of Master Ball tier. For me, there's only two picks here. It's Chrono Trigger Same. and Super Metroid. Really? Um, really? That's I'm, not my I'm two. surprised. But uh, Super Metroid, I have occasionally thought of replaying Chrono Trigger. I haven't stopped thought about. I haven't stopped thinking about replaying it since I played it. Like I still hum the music. It's been it's been a month since I since I put that game down. Like so, I have like, it's I have awesome. three, and unfortunately, Chrono Trigger is not one of them. Even though it's it's it, it's a great game, but like again, this is me. Like it's. A toss-up between Super Metroid, Mega Man Battle Network 3, and Melee. See, mine was between Melee and Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Yikes. So it's between Melee and Chrono Trigger then? Is that is that is that what I'm hearing? That's 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 the tie break? There's two for Melee, it, it, two it's for gotta Chrono be Melee, Trigger. man. Like it's just the, the legacy we all have with it. The 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 friendship bonding that we've had and It's true. Well, some would say that both of them are the best in their respective fields. I will say that the difference... I mean, I feel like all these games are the best in their fields, except maybe arguably Battle Network, but okay. that's a, you know, had to be there kind of a thing. I was going to say that um, they are still releasing JRPGs. Melee is kind of irreplaceable. Like, yes, Ultimate is technically the bigger game. Maybe better. Maybe not. However, with Slippy in mind, it's so hard to argue against Melee. Yeah. In that field. I mean, I played Chrono Trigger alone. I played Melee with you guys. I had more fun playing Melee with you guys than I had playing Chrono Trigger alone. Back in the day. Yeah, I'm just thinking and of all the fond memories that we've all you know had with this game, playing in high school, and it's, those memories are just irreplaceable, man. I mean, I have irreplaceable memories of both games, so it's really hard to like. I remember booting up <laughs> Chrono Trigger on the, an emulator on my computer that probably had no business emulating anything, and trying to get through that game and just experiencing that world the first time. Right. I mean, oh. How do you pick between these two games? I think. I think see, I like melee more than you guys do, even. But I mean, I'm, melee is I'm... like this this culmination of all this lore that happened before it, right? Like you had the Super Nintendo. All these characters were on it. They all had their games. They had the NES games. There was this whole Nintendo verse evolution that happened, and they all culminated into this game. Like it's the magnum opus, basically, of Nintendo at the time which had a long history at that time. And on top of that, we all love it. I guess I'm going to give it my vote. Super Super Smash Brothers Melee. Yeah, that's where my vote's going. I'm happy. Our Master Either Ball League winner is, and arguably the league winner in total, Super Smash Brothers Melee. Wow! Awesome. That's crazy. Which was a game submitted by our community during the uh, last viewer pool. Yeah, that we had. So thank you guys for that. That was really fun. Like I, I honestly didn't expect melee to like top everything, but like it, it did. Wow. Yeah. Once we talked through yeah. it, I was, I was, I knew that it was between those two going into this because they're just the games that they are, are just incredible. I mean, I had a couple. Like I, I could have, like, like I said, like Battle Network. I thought could have won or Super Metroid. Um. Yeah. Melee, I, I, I definitely knew it had a spot, but you know, just seeing it all play out, it's just great. There it is, guys. A full year in in review. So, we have one last treat for you. I'd like to pause and say that if you've made it this far, leave a like, leave a comment, uh, join us for next year's league. We'll be doing this same type of thing again, except we'll be doing it gradually throughout the year uh, over the next 26 episodes, one game for each episode with a guest that brings on their favorite retro game to tell us why it's the best. Um, 
you can also find us on Facebook where we uh, update with news and what games we're playing. And uh, if you like to listen to us uh, with uh, audio, you can find us on any of the podcast platforms. And if you're listening to us on an audio platform, uh, try us on YouTube. Dan puts a lot of effort into these videos and they're pretty awesome uh, in terms of visual, especially for a podcast. Um, so yeah, catch us on YouTube there too. And now the last treat is actually our community participating who have been with us pretty much all year, who have given us some superlative awards to hand out. So we're going to go right down the list and we're going to start with JMO whose superlative award is best game to set the mood on date night. <laughs> it's a spicy one, JMO. <laughs> very, very spicy. Um, Mario Party is not on this list, huh? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's got to be, no. be Smash Brothers, right? I mean, you, you go over mm. to your girlfriend's to play Smash or to Smash. My wife loves me because I'm a great cook. So maybe <laughs> yeah, it's Ori. Ori, no yeah. Ori for I me. actually had that on, <laughs> yeah, on my list, too. It was either that or Smash. Smash was my joke one. And the ladies love foreign languages, so <laughs> I was thinking I was thinking Ori no Ori, but like also don't sleep on the scary ones too, because if they like scary stuff, that's the perfect way to get them to cuddle. The arm clinger. Yeah, can you imagine arm clinging to Parasite Eve? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> the horse flaming chariot or whatever. <laughs> or is it vigilante eight? Shut your mouth. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Uh XL Wolf Boy says most fun weapon to use oh easy yeah easy what, is what it? do you got the lead pipe in silent <laughs> hill i mean that is pretty fun but it... you changed my answer i had two i had buster max from Mega Man legends and the chrysagrum from mm. uh symphony Sim- oh. of the night Chris Agram really is something else, isn't it? Oh, it is very fun, <laughs> that, but like, I did not laugh nearly as hard as I did with that damn <laughs> lead pipe overhand swinging. The nurse, the nurse killer 2.0. <laughs> and then it turned into the, the axe or the, the hammer. hammer. <laughs> it really is something. Like, you don't even have to use bullets after. And it's just, it's not like a, it's not like a cheap weapon that you'd like get at the end of a game. Like it's just like a melee attack, and it's very good. Well, because it it's yeah, you pick up the hammer and it stuns and every time it hits. They, they get stun locked. It's broken. And you're supposed to be like afraid of these things, but you just walk right up to them and just just give them the biz. Yeah, well, you were yeah, afraid you, of them uh... until you found it, and you're like, oh, okay. Oh, now they're afraid of me. <laughs> Thank you for that, Wolf Boy. Lobaka says, "Game with the best soundtrack for a folk music cover." I don't know. <laughs> That's out of my element. I have no idea. Uh, Chrono Chrono out. Trigger. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, for a folk what about probably chrono trigger yeah but chrono triggers get the best soundtrack for every cover so it's a i mean there through. is a game on here that has like folk sounding music lost kingdoms no banjo kazooie plays the banjo and <laughs> yeah. right all right yeah okay. we'll go with banjo kazooie is that is that folk does is folk banjo i'm not cultured enough for this uh, for this question i don't need, not me i neither. feel terrible I think folk music's like, you know, traditional rural music. I mean, passed down through generations. Okay. <laughs> we'll go with it. Banjo, Banjo Kazooie, whether it's folk music or not. Danko Misty, the game that most surprised you, good or bad? I have to say, Mortal Kombat 3 was a shock. I kind of want to pick her game. <laughs> whose was, who's was, who's was her game? Uh, oh, Kingdom. that's right, because her and. And Lysanthia um, voted for it. Yeah. No, it's 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 an unknown game, so you don't you don't know what you're gonna get when you open it. Yeah. Yeah, but I was hopeful. People love it's... Mortal Kombat. Like I turned uh... that on and then like started playing it, and I was like, "What? Why do people like this? This is terrible." Honestly, for me, the two on either end of the spectrum: Happy Surprise, Little Samson. Bad surprise, Lost Kingdoms, because Lost Kingdoms was on my radar for games wanting to have played and never having. So when it got announced, I was excited. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Mine was, um, I didn't know that. Mine was Ori no Ori Ori. I was pleasantly surprised when I played that game. I Because when it was all in like Japanese text, I was like, how how much am I actually really going to play this? I can't even read the darn thing. But like I ended up <laughs> like playing and you know beating it or getting very close to beating it. 
I, it was just very fun. I wasn't surprised at X7, just because I'd done it before. Yeah. Uh, I was really surprised at Chrono Trigger, even though people told me it was it it was good. But does my surprise to the upside outweigh my surprise to the downside of Mortal Kombat? I don't think so. <laughs> I guess my biggest <laughs> surprise, I mean, it would probably be uh, Silent Hill. I didn't think it was going to be as good as it was when we all played it. But I had an absolute blast when we were all like <laughs> going through the hospital and like it was so good. All right, there it is. Lady Lishi, the most soul sucking game. Oh, I know that's definitely lost. Lost. lost no, game that's for uh, sure. something the night. Soul Steel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's definitely lost. Game. But, um, <laughs> So I was thinking of soul sucking as something. A point goes different. to goes to Castlevania Symphony of the Night there. Definitely. See, like soul sucking. I was thinking, like, how many hours can you dump into Final Fantasy XI? It is pretty soul sucking. Your guy's soul was gone for like three years. Yeah, it was. But it's... I guess all of those are pretty good answers. So. <laughs> Jeff Doug, the man himself, says the best beard. I don't know if he means in game or between the three of us. Well, obviously. In game, it's it's got to be. It's got to be either Land's grandfather or Beryl from Mega yeah, Man. That was, uh, that... Land's grandfather. He actually grooms the thing. I, that was my pick. Was uh, Beryl Casket? <laughs> what about Match? Who's Match? He's the Mr. guy Match? with the yeah with the fire navi. He's got his little goatee oh, thing. Oh, Heat Man. Yeah, that. No, no, it's definitely got a. But he's got like the jagged beard and like Beryl Casket. You could, like <laughs> Dracula doesn't have a beard, you right? Saw like a, uh, a Dracula tree with has that a little thing. beard. He's got a little goat yeah. teeth thing. Oh look, you know Dracula's a handsome fella. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, he is. You know, he's he does he does well with the facial hair. <laughs> he he pulls off a look that not 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 many people do. Yeah, for sure. Were there any Who beards in Parasite beard? Eve? Does Zangief have a beard? Does Conquer have a beard? <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> he has a beer. Zangief does have a really awesome beard. Just saying. By by today's standard, the Zangief look has has come back around. Tough one. A lot of a lot of good contenders here. There's not a single beard in Summon Knight. I'm pretty confident. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's I think it's Zangief. Definitely over the two granddads, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Zangief on that one. Does, does anybody have a beard in Chrono Trigger, or like not a single beard there either? Huh? Mm, nobody worthwhile. Yeah. I feel like culturally, Japanese people just don't grow beards. That's what I'm getting no, when, really. I'm, when I'm looking through this list. <laughs> or they just don't view it as a as a super appealing thing for their characters. Anyway, <clears throat> all right, best beard goes to Zangief. Now we have two uh, members of our community who really stood out. They really went the extra mile, so they get their own award section. This next section is called the Hux Awards. Uh, most expensive game played this year. That's a little Yeah, Samson. I was going to say. Yeah. Like, it's like... Unless you guys spent more in membership fees playing Final Fantasy XI no, during those days. No way. Like... But you'd have to get up to like three grand. Yeah. Total Samson, easy. Hardest slash easiest game played all year. Hardest Mortal Kombat 3. Yep. Agreed. Easiest... Uh, honestly, the JRPGs are pretty easy. I this three that come to mind for me: so this Summon Night, Something of the Night, and um, Parasite Eve. Those those three for easiest. Yeah, those games? games are pretty dang easy. Yeah, you think Summon Night's easier than Mario and the? Well, you I, you would think you would think it's easier than Mario Land and the Gold Coins. I think so. Like, I don't. I, I don't even think I. I think I died like once in Summon yeah, Night. Yeah, I don't. Same, like it was so like easy. Kieran in the volcano. Yeah, yeah, true. I didn't really die in some night or lose fights. Yeah, I mean Chrono Trigger is pretty easy, but it's it's not as easy as Summon Night. All right, we'll give it to Summon Night. That'll be the easiest game we played. Best supporting character in a game: Dex. Lan. <laughs> Given he's not a supporting character, he's a main <laughs> yeah, I character. Guess so. I mean, oh. yeah, yeah, I guess he's a co-main character. Tails. Tails is another one. Tails is a good one. He's a main character. You can play as him. Well, he's a supporting character because it doesn't matter if he dies. Right? Like, he is like pretty play broken. Sonic. He can like yeah. effectively half the amount of hits on Dr. Robotnik. It's crazy. He can he can do all the hits if your friend picks up the controller and plays <laughs> Tails. Is the best supporting character um, your avatar in Summon Knight or the mask in 
Splatterhouse? The mask is definitely not. He turns out to be the bad guy. <laughs> and he's using oh. you, so absolutely no. <laughs> oh, it didn't say he had to be a good guy. It said that he's the best supporting character. He's obviously not. Well, he supports you by letting you do breadsticks. He's trying to take over the world. Did we say Roll from Mega Man Legends? She's pretty good, too. Pretty good, good, but I don't think I don't think up there. She makes you broken ass weapons. Uh, no, I'd say Banjo and Kazooie are two halves of the same coin, right? Yeah, if you were gonna pick a supporting character on that, it would have to be like Bottles. I mean, I'd argue that Banjo is the supporting character most of the time, but you know, <laughs> yeah. between yeah. those, uh, I'll tell you, it's definitely not not uh, Claire Redfield. I'll tell you. Right <laughs> oh now. wait, I've got the answer. I've got the answer, and it's it's going to be uncontestable. What is it? It's the rocket launcher police officer in Streets of Rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't hit you the whole time. <laughs> sure, let's give it to him. Dude, on the skyscraper level, the elevator level or whatever, he's all the way on the ground. And he... <laughs> For police brutality, it goes to the officers in Streets of Rage. Most replayable game, uh, Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. Mega Man Battle Network. Chrono Trigger. I have I play all yeah, I got Chrono Trigger, Melee, Final Fantasy Eleven, Street Fighter Two, and Resident Evil Two. Uh this one's really hard. Yeah. Battle Network's good. Melee's great. Um there's two fighting games in here. Like it's just eleven. There's so many so much replayability. I, I played... asked in our Discord to play Melee outside of the window that we played the game for the podcast. Yeah. I mean, if you were playing with people, melee. If you're not playing with people, Chrono Trigger has 14 endings. 14. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, Chrono Trigger is a good one I mean, for replayability. Final Fantasy XI is a very replayable too. Not nowadays. Yes, it is. There's tons of free mm-hmm. servers to play on. Gotta find that. You gotta get it. Gotta get it going. Well, same with Little Samson. You have to pay three grand for it if you don't want to emulate it. <sighs> there is no not wanting to emulate it. It's three grand. <laughs> Care what you say. Uh, I'm I'm happy with melee. I mean, I yeah. people are still playing it now. Most replayable game in the Hux Awards goes to melee, the oldest and newest game. What was the oldest game? I feel like I have to look it up. Uh, it's an NES game. Gun, no, Gunnack was later. Gunnack, Ninja Gaiden. Samson is much later. Yeah, it, like Samson, the SNES was already out. Must be so Ninja Gaiden, I think. Yeah, I think it's Ninja Gaiden. When did Gunnack come out? It was later, I think. Was it Ninja Gun Gaiden 1988? Gunnack's 91. Samson's 91. And Ninja Gaiden's 89. Yeah, then it's Ninja Gaiden is the oldest. The newest game is Metroid Prime. Summon Knight? What is it? Is it Summon Knight? Summon Knight was 2003. 2003 for Summon Knight. Yeah, I think it was Summon Knight. Wow, that's crazy. See? What? As games get newer, they don't get as Boy, fun. what was... um? Battle Network 3. That's probably pretty close to Summon Night. Battle Network 3's 2002. Oh, okay. Not quite. December of 2002. Not quite. Okay. The award for the newest game goes to Summon Night for what that's worth. Um, best villain in a game all year. Dracula. Dracula, Gruntilda. Best villain. Oh. Magus. Kafka. 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 My, my personal choice is definitely Dracula. Oh, yeah. I like Dracula more than more than Kefka. Yeah. I forget about him when we talk about best video game villains, but I like Dracula a lot. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's but it's honestly, it's probably Dracula, but it's between Dracula, Kefka, and Gruntilda. I think they're all great villains. What about Sigma? <laughs> you think? Yeah, okay. You think Gruntilda's pretty stock? I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I just love that she rhymes and it has like a ridiculous like reason for doing what she wants to do and. She's just such a jerk to everybody. I I don't know. I like her. I like the background info you get from her her bitch sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bruntilda. She is pretty funny. All right, all right. Uh, we'll we'll give it to Kefka with honor. Uh, we'll we'll give it to Dracula with honorable mentions to Gruntilda. All right. Uh, next is the Relica Awards. Relica Awards. I still don't say it right. It's gonna chide me again. Best and worst story. Worst story? Mortal Kombat. <laughs> no, Mortal Kombat. Okay, so it's for being totally honest. Street Fighter Two has no story, none. Or I know Riori. 
I, it, has, it has a story. It has a story. I mean, Gun pretty bad, too. Like, come on. Super Smash Brothers Melee story. <laughs> I, so, are we omitting those, or are we counting the fact that, that some of these games feel, have zero If it doesn't story? really have a story, so, I don't feel like they count. Okay, so we're gonna okay, we're gonna fair. omit that. Okay, Twisted Metal story is pretty outrageous. <laughs> I love Calypso, man. <laughs> He's so funny. I I like Mortal Kombat story actually. The whole idea that uh, Shao Kahn just gets sick of doing things by the gods' rules and invades Earth. Yeah. Like this 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 something there, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> X Seven story. Even Sigma's tired of it. <laughs> Yeah, just saying, like, I mean, like, I mean, all, the, like, all the X games are pretty similar when it comes to story. Like, Give me a good fight, boys, like you always <laughs> do. Yeah, <laughs> and it is his seventh go about. Yeah, in a row. What do we it's think? Pretty bad what do we story. think about Splatterhouse story? I mean, I guess the mask is kind of unique. It's fine. Yeah, it also Can turns you on you at the end. Yeah, fine. Yeah, Conker's Bad Fur Day story is pretty. Baloney, pretty good. Baloney. Pretty good. Oh, really? Baloney's good. The story is the story is the whole reason you. Yeah, Baloney's great. <laughs> I haven't had Baloney no, in years. Not. It's delicious. <laughs> Stop it. Fry that sucker up. Let's go. Uh, I I still think it's probably Mario Land Two. <laughs> he goes. I wasn't even thinking about it, but you know, he he gets an evil twin. It's kind of telenovela y. Yeah, but it's still worse than like. Does Gundak count? Gun that counts. Yeah. How about Little Samson's story? Like the the little tiny thing they give you in the handbook. That's it. It has a good story. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's something there. There's this story that's inferred throughout the game. Like you know, the wizards invade. You know, the kingdom can't get knights out because the wizards kill them. You know that like Little Samson is journeying to kill the wizards. Like there's a there's something there. I'm not it's fine. I'm not sure. It, it might be Gun Knack for me. Yeah, maybe it's Gundak, because I can't even remember what the story is, but I do remember there is one. <laughs> it's like okay. things things are coming alive, and they have to shoot it. Like That's like literally the story. That, yeah. like, <laughs> formerly not trenchant items are you. becoming alive. Yeah. Oh, what was it? Um, a galaxy that's far, 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 yeah, far, something far, far, far away. <laughs> or the girl that gives you the upgrade. She's always like, S story? <laughs> probably Chrono Trigger, right? Yeah, probably. Without a okay, doubt. So I have a couple of things that this is between. So like <clears throat> I know that Metroid Prime's story is really bare bones, but the way they go about telling it through the scanning and the observable like atmospheric storytelling was incredible. Now I don't know if that makes it better than Chrono Trigger or Final Fantasy VI, but I did want to shout out to it. Heard. Heard. It's still Chrono Trigger for me. That being said, I almost want to give it to six. Oh, yeah, I think I'm on Chrono Trigger on this one. I'm fine with that, too. I, like, I love Chrono Trigger. I like but, six, too, but... I but, think... like, six has a lot of human element in it. Like, thinking about just things that come to mind is, like, the abuse of power over Terra and Celes, for example. The love story for Locke, for example. The whole, like, trying to save Sid when he's sick after the World of Ruin part. Like, uh, Terra and the orphanage and trying to protect the kids from the, the demon. Kefka's whole entire thing with the, the military and Gestal. And there are so many parts. Like, I, I just feel like the story is so yeah no you're right it, it's definitely up there for sure it is it is but time travel stories are so rarely done well and the whole idea that like you see the future and you're trying to prevent it and then you become the cause of it in this big reveal like you know seven eighths to the end of the game is just this huge like crescendo of a moment that the entire game's built you up to like, and there's plenty of distractions along the way. And, like, everything clicks into place. I don't know. Like, it's a beautifully crafted, very focused, cohesive story. Yeah, I just think that Final Fantasy VI does its ups and downs better. And then it has things like Ultros. <laughs> where it's, yeah, it's like, like immersion-breaking stuff that happens. In the beginning of the game, 
mostly. Yeah. It's a tough one. I don't think it's as clear cut as you make it sound. Yeah, well, I mean, time time travel done well tickles my fancy personally, but I don't know, Dan, what do you think? Tiebreaker? Yeah. No, like Steve brings up a lot of good points with Final Fantasy, and I'm not knocking that at all. Like either story is fantastic, but for me, I resonate more with Chrono Triggers. I just I don't know. Like I just like the characters more. It's just that, like you said, like the the time travel is done so well, and I just it fascinates me when you do something in one world and it just affects another. It's just it's just great. All right, how about best and worst voice acting? Resident Evil Two for worst. All right, listen. Before we dive right into Resident Evil Two, I want to remind you guys of Conquer. I don't think it's that bad. First, yeah, Resident like Evil the 2. voice acting. Oh wait, with the oh wait. Accents, we're like wait. X Seven is terrible <laughs> i forgot burn the ground burn the ground burn 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 the ground, burn, 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 burn the ground. Oh, what did hey, they hey, listen, do hey, hey. now they really made a mess yeah i think it's actually worse than resident evil 2 it's it's pretty bad and it's later which makes it less excusable yeah um, I, i'm inclined to agree with dan there best voice acting super metroid in the beginning where they're <laughs> She's reading up. There's so little room to mess up. <laughs> I would say for best voice acting is either Mega Man Legends or Cynthia the other night. Mega Man Legends is a very good voice acting, and people do make fun of Symphony of the Night, even though I like it. But I like it for all the wrong reasons. Really? They they make fun of the voice acting? Yes. Oh, really? I, I l- That's because it's, it is kind of bad. Monster. Oh, the, you oh, don't be, yeah. in this I just world. loved Ali Card's voice. Like, like when... I don't know. It's like I know they made like a couple like remakes on like the PlayStation Network, and his voice is different. It's just like it's objectively it, worse. It bothers me. It's like I picture Alucard with this deep voice. I I loved the quirkiness of the original voice acting. Yeah, uh, but again, I like it for the wrong reasons. I know it's bad, but I still like it. What about voice acting in Melee when Mario wave dashes? <laughs> no, get out of here with that. That's a sound effect. Actually, I didn't think about that. That's probably is the best. No, I think. Um... Personally, I would go with Mega Man Legends here. They do such a good job. The only one that botches it is Mega Man Juno, but everyone else is, is doing great. Prepare yourself. Especially because they you know it's a dub. 3 a.m. Right? And like, <laughs> I don't even think like some animes were treated as 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 well. Like some dubbed animes weren't weren't treated as well as Mega Man Legends was. Yeah. To be fair, we don't really have a lot of games on this list. That have a lot of voice acting. That comes with the territory. Yeah. Best and worst dialogue. The dialogue, there were certain parts of Seven Night where I was like, what did they just say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the translation, like, especially when they were on, on the island and they got kidnapped and they had to fight the monster. Because, and then, like, how they explained how it was happening was just this unhinged arrangement of words that I just couldn't understand. It was this terrible translation That's issue. no Riori. You couldn't even read it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And you know what? I did look at translations of it, and is the Japanese express themselves much far too differently for me to discern what's going on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it that. That's fun. Best dialogue. That might be six, maybe. Yeah, that's kind of like in the same vein as best story, right? Alucard, the though? Storytelling can happen without dialogue. What is a mat? <laughs> Miserable pile of Miserable secrets. little pile of secrets. It surely is the most quotable of these games. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one cutscene in the beginning. Uh, so, Conker's Bad Fur Day has that cutscene where he's talking to, um, to the Scarecrow that is like the oh, most... I hate it. It's the most accurate depiction of two drunk people trying to communicate I've ever seen. <laughs> I just press B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you help me? No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I can help. You. <laughs> it's very, very accurate. Oh god, that's funny. So I don't know. Yeah, which uh, game? Which game pulls the most emotions out of the dialogue? Um, uh, not Banjo Kazooie. No, oh, no. <laughs> it's it's just for fun. I don't know. It's probably six or Chrono Trigger again. I mean, they're the the greatest RPGs we have on the list. And Samus doesn't talk. It doesn't count. I don't know. Battle Network. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. I will defer. Uh, 
most overlooked and overrated games. Overlooked. Most overlooked game. Uh, so I guess I'm looking Samson? for things on this list that would surprise... Yeah, definitely Samson. Done. Yeah, I, I, I can agree with that. Overrated? Overlooked and what? Overrated? Conkers. Overrated. Conkers. Conkers? Yeah, probably. It is not fun to play. It's fun like, to watch. Like a lot not, of people talk that game up like it's like awesome, and it's not. Like it's so okay yeah, at best. It has, it has a cult following, and they're never going to get out of the cult. Yeah. Agreed. Right. That cuts it for our superlatives. Thank you so much for writing in uh, those. Really helps our show a lot when we get commentary from you guys. We really just want to include more commentary uh, from our community. So, anytime you feel like writing in thoughts on the on the existing game or questions of the week. You know, you can do so from our Discord, which will be in the link below, or you can email into the Cable Club Podcast at gmail.com. Um, but for now, we're going to set our first year aside, Ooh. and uh, we're going to announce the first game of our Retro Game League 2025. All right. Steve, this first pick is yours. Fine. I get to pick a game. You better pick a banger. <laughs> I better pick a banger. Well... I know that we're a little late because this episode's going to be coming out late, but if you're in the Discord, you get to know what it is ahead of time. But I'm going to be putting forth the impressive Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Kong Quest, as my pick for the league in 2025. Very nice. Beautiful. Diddy's Kong Quest. Yeah. I always thought it was Diddy Kong's Quest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes sense. But it's not. It's play on words, I guess. So, without getting into too much details, the reason that I'm picking it is that Donkey Kong Country is considered one of the greatest platformer games on the Super Nintendo. And then they released Diddy's Conquest, which is an upgraded almost every facet. And I think that this game is going to be a knockout drag out for the league. So I'm excited to see how it pairs up against the games that our guests pick, um, because I think it is one of the greatest platformers of all time. Very nice. Our v- I'm excited to play it. Yeah. Our guests have their work cut out for them. All right, guys, that was a marathon. Yes, it was. But uh, ready to call it game over on our first year? Yeah, it's been a blast. It's been so fun ringing in with you guys. Yeah. All right. Game over, fellas. Game over. Game over.